The Lulbergs, that's our word, brought to you by Super Mario Maker 2, which which is why we haven't come out with an episode since April. And uh, I'm here with Jeremy uh, Helen Keller. She might as well just do that yes. one again. I haven't seen or heard from you in a while, and it's completely my fault. Still my, <laughs> still, still my favorite name, so yes, let's go with that one. Right, right. What's up, man? <laughs> it's been going good, so we should probably give an update to what's been going on. Um, last time we did an episode was episode 100, where I did a... Uh, uh, an episode about the Federal Reserve. It was half a solo episode and half uh, had a guest come on, um, where we talked about all the crap that went on with the, or all the crap that people believe about the Federal Reserve that isn't true, and you don't need any of those things to oppose the Federal Reserve. Um, and that was a great episode. A lot of people liked it. It was, even though it was yes. polarizing, people still thought it was kind of interesting. Like, oh, that's an interesting perspective. I don't agree with that. Well, whatever. But uh, yeah. Yes, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the actual episode. You got me with the first one again, you bastard. <laughs> we're not we're not doing that joke again. I mean, we did it twice because everybody was like, oh, it's, it's going it's to be great. I wonder how you're going to fool me your next one. It's like, I'm going to fool you the exact same way because <laughs> you people are easy. Yes, well, so, some of us are slow learners, Jim. I'm one yeah, of them. <laughs> but I, I'm not doing it again, and that's not a uh, another joke. I have some other jokes down the line that are I think are much better, and I'm working on those. And it's it's gonna take a while for me to get everything ready for those, but uh, it's gonna be great. Uh, so you can tell, like, just throwing on an album or two is, doesn't take much work. It's something I can do in a day, but something that I need at least what is it? Eight months? No, 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 almost a year away. Ten months? How long away is it? So, uh, so nine, months, nine months, months maybe. So, so nine months. Yeah, we're nine months of July planning. now. Yeah, <laughs> nine months of planning. You can tell it's not just gonna be another album thing. Unless something unless something comes up and I can't do it, then I'll just not do an April Fool's joke or something. But anyway. Uh, but there's been a lot of things that have been happening with me. The reason why I haven't recorded an episode in forever was mostly because my career kind of did a, a, a shift in the positive. Uh, it's not that I'm getting paid more, but I'm doing better work. I'm no longer doing nursing. I'm doing mental health technicians, and I fucking love it. I love every minute of it, working with people with schizophrenia, extreme bipolar, uh, all of those things, uh, you know, manic depressives, suicidal people. And uh, it's kind of nice. I kind of, kind of really enjoyed it. It was less scary. So it's basically, like, hmm? it's basically like getting paid to go to a libertarian event. Then, huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Except here, I can be like, uh -uh, you're going back to your room right now, and, and I can physically take them and put them back in their room. But I, I can't do that at, at Freedom Fest, which I'm going to this year. I'm just not going to be there Wednesday. I'll be there Thursday, Friday, and possibly Saturday. Uh, just to hang out. I'm not going to attend any events. I'm not buying a pass or anything. I'm just going to go there and hang out with uh, people that are just standing around in the hallways because you can do that. Um, trying to get Dapperton to at least come by and swing by because it's only a four hour drive from where he lives. So, um, but yeah, so that should be fun. And then I was like, great. And I've been doing a lot of stuff on YouTube as well. And then a little thing happened called uh, Super Mario Maker 2 and uh, Mortal Kombat 2 Arcade Cabinet. And those things have just Ooh. like obliterated my time, just obliterated my time <laughs> because it's like <laughs> I have there's two things that I've always wanted when I was a really little kid. I mean, like when I got older, I, I had more realistic expectations, but I, I achieved my unrealistic expectations <laughs> from being a child, which is I always wanted a Mortal Kombat arcade cabinet in my house and I always wanted to be on the radio. Check, check. Yes. Now, now on to nice. my more, uh, <laughs> more important things, right? <laughs> Yes. So I got that, and then Super Mario Maker came out, and it's just like, ah, oh, this is this is why I bought the Switch. I was waiting for them to come out, and it took like two years for them to release it. But oh man, it was the wait worth it. I can't stop playing it. In fact, fuck this. I'm gonna go play right now. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not even doing this. All right, I'll stay. Just that's, one. That's and, all right. And just just a little uh, bit, and then I'm gonna go play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you keep talking about it. I'm trying to think. I don't think I ever played that game. So Mario Maker. Yeah. Of course you didn't play it because it was on the Wii U and no one owned a Wii U. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that would be why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Mario Maker, yeah, like Nintendo's Nintendo's really kind of, sometimes they're really good at marketing and sometimes they're god awful at marketing. The Wii U was a good example. And now Super Mario Maker is kind of another example because their advertisement's more like, hey, look at all these levels you can build. You can build all of these great levels. Don't you want to build your own levels? And a lot of people don't. A lot of people are like, no, I just want to play shit, you know? But uh, most yeah. of the people who have Super Mario Maker don't make levels. They play other people's levels. And you can go and play with other people's levels. Now there's a multiplayer thing, so you can play other people's levels with other people. 
Oh, it's so great. Mm. It's laggy as fuck, the, the multiplayer, but everything else is perfect. Um, and there's all kinds of creative like levels on there. You can There's like Rube Goldberg machines. There's like weird puzzles that work off crazy mechanics and stuff, like speed run levels. There's like theme levels that people, music levels where you can just walk across the stage and it plays like, you know, the theme to Final Fantasy or Kirby or, you know, Star Fox or something. It, I can't get enough of this game. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I can't get enough. No, of this no, game. which, no, no, which, no, which Mario are you making? Can you make any of them, or is it just the? Uh... Yeah. So there's there's uh, f- five different types of uh, Mario games that you can make levels for: Super Mario Brothers One, Super Mario Brothers Three, Super Mario Brothers World, Super Mario Brothers Wii U Deluxe, and uh, Super Mario Bro- Brothers 3D World. Which is like the uh, new version, but but it's basically a two dimensional version of 3D World, which there are two dimensional aspects of the 3D World game, but it's a whole other thing. But no one played that game because it was on the Wii U. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's fucking great. I fucking love it. I can't get enough of it. It's amazing. Some of the things are, and and the troll levels. I mean, just mwah, just levels where you're like, oh, I'm supposed to go here. Oh, oh, that was Gooby. I need to turn those um, those sounds off that let me know when people leave. So anyways, yeah, that's what I've been doing with most of my time. I'm fucking loving it. I'm loving my new job. And a lot of the times, depending on what place I work, I can also bring Mario Maker with me and play. And it's funny because the other techs and nurses with that are there are like, oh, let me play this level. This looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and what, so what's been going on with you? Might as well oh, wrap up because you, you probably have a much more interesting life. I'm just sitting here playing Mortal Kombat and Mario Maker. <laughs> Yeah, well, like, let's see. Since since last we talked, yeah, I've been on the move again. My uh, my place that I had to stay. Oh, sorry, cars going by. Um, <laughs> the place that I had to stay for the winter was uh, was taken away from me. Although I, I knew that was coming, so I, I've been back in the element for a few months. I spent a month down in Florida with my buddy Merrick Van Landingham. Uh, I did start podcasting again, kind of, sort of. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Uh, people people keep asking me if I'm bringing my shows back. I still don't even have hosting for that, thanks to my uh, idiot former co-host Dave. Um, so I kind of joined the guys at the Liberty Forge. I've been doing some podcasting with them. Oh, okay. Uh, I went out. I went out to the uh, Midwest Le- Peace and Liberty Fest a couple of weeks ago, uh, which is of course my yearly retreat. And then afterwards, got to go once again down to the great Ben Stone's house and hang out with him and his family for a couple of days. Nice. I should have sent you some and- songs. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> um, but ba- ba- Ben's doing great, which I, I was really happy to hear. Um, his oh, last okay. year when I went to see him, he w- he wasn't in the greatest shape, but uh, he's back almost to full capacity again. Like he is, he is sharp as attack again. He's writing again. Nice. Heck, when we were down there, he had, some, he had some college kid who apparently goes to Kent State. Uh, learned just recently learned about Ben and made it his mission that he wants to do a biography about him. Oh, nice. So he was actually. Th- he was actually there while we were there, and they did they did an interview. So uh, that's supposed to be coming out, I think, end of the year. I think he said he was looking to have that put together. But uh, oh, I'm yeah, it was it was really great to see Ben. Yeah, I was I was really stoked about that. I mean, the kid, I can't, I, I apologize, I forget the kid's name, but he seemed he was really nice, and uh, he just seemed really stoked to meet Ben and stuff. And Ben, it was just great to hear Ben talking, and it was actually really cool because. I brought a couple of friends with me from New York out to the fest, so they of course came with me to Ben's house, and this was their first time like my one friend uh rachel had never even heard of ben before and my other my uh her boyfriend jason knew of ben but you know didn't had never met him or anything like that so it was just great to like i actually sat back and watched them listen to ben tell stories and it was just as cool as the first time i got to sit in ben's presence and actually listen to him tell stories and stuff it was just so cool to watch other people just be like completely um you know, wrapped up in just, just not moving and just listening to every word he says because he's such a great storyteller. So mm-hmm. that that was a lot of fun. So you're enjoying um, it. Vi- you're enjoying your first time again vicariously. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, Which I, I have but, not. Ex- uh, I have not hung out. I mean, I've I've done a show. We, we, he's been a guest host here, which one of the very very few we have guest hosts. He's been a guest host here. I uh, did episodes of the Fiends with him. Um, my favorite episode is the one we did on. Um, was it the day that the, uh, the the bomb in Nagasaki dropped? We did we did an episode together there, and we were talking about stuff and talking yes. about war and all that stuff. That was great. Yeah, Ben is a 
but but Ben's a great guy and it's always good to see him so like I said I was I was happy I got to do that and he's so funny too because not now like he's not you know he's not on social media anymore but his mm -hmm. wife is and he tracks my vlogs and all my stuff through his through his wife's account <laughs> So anytime I mention that I'm driving anywhere, I'll get a telegram message. Hey, just saw your just saw your post. You know, if you'd happen to be anywhere in the area, you're always free to stop by, which is, you know, to me, it's just such a cool thing that like I have an open invitation to go to Ben's house whenever I want. It's so great. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a little kid about it, but I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever in the areas where he uh, where he lives. So it's probably not <laughs> to me, but I'm sure once I do. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out to, to I'm gonna drive out to New York. Well, hey, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Well, listen, man. One of one of these one of these days one one of these years you can come meet us out at the you know the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, and then we all go down in a caravan afterwards to Ben's house. I'm down. Sign me up. Every time that I try to go to one of these festivals out 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 of state, even to the one in Arizona, the Jackalope. Every time I go that like make plans to go, like something happens where I can't go. You know, some new thing about work or you know some money issues where it's like, oh, I, I could afford to do it, but I don't want to put myself in debt. And it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna pass. I'll wait. I'll wait until next year. But the one thing I can always go to is Freedom Fest, and that's because one, it's free, and two, it's like not even ten minutes away. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was gonna say it's right down the road from you. Yeah, that's yeah. So convenient. it's like, all right, uh, well, it's about fifteen minutes depending on traffic. Um, I mean, so there's there, but I didn't even go last year because last year I was so wrapped up, like covering a story about like some kids who thought it'd be a good idea to solicit child pornography to own the libs. And that was, that was a fucking brilliant fucking move. Real nice. <laughs> see my time with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, hmm. So how was peace and peace, Midwest peace and Liberty conference? Oh, the fest oh, was great as usual. Actually, this year was. It was kind of different than all the years I've been there, and I wasn't the only person to say that. There was just a really different vibe this year, which was kind of cool. There was it wasn't like it was any bigger than it normally is, but there was a huge turnover. A lot of the regulars, for some reason, didn't show uh, prior commitments. Stuff like you were talking about, things just come up at the last minute; they mm -hmm. couldn't go. But we had a whole slew of newbies there, um, which you know, people people that I've been friends with on Facebook for years that were finally able to make it, and it just kind of changed the complexion of the fest a lot. And it was just very chill, very laid back. Complexion. Wait a minute, uh, are you time. becoming an ethno statist? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> to get these damn minorities out of my my libertarian events. Um, but no, it was it was great. It was like I said, it was, it was very laid back, very chill. And uh, I, I was happy with it. And a lot of people seemed to have a good time. And pretty much everybody who was there for the first time said they're definitely coming back next year. So I think it was a success. Nice. Yeah. What else have I done since then? Oh, uh, I created. Did I, talk, I think I talked about this. I, I made pogs. I think I already talked about yes. that. That was already a thing. Yeah. So I have pogs. So if you see me at Freedom Fest, I have pogs. I also have like a pog set for sale that I'm only going to sell there. Uh, so hit me up. Uh, if you're going, uh, you'll, you'll probably notice me. I'm going to be the guy playing the uh, the Mar my Mario Maker, uh, my Switch. <laughs> you can't miss me. Uh, but I made a video about the non-aggression principle. Did, did that come out? I think yeah, that came out bef uh, after the last episode. So yeah, yeah. Did you see? Did you have a chance to peruse it at all? No, I don't. No? don't I haven't been paying much attention to social media at all, so I don't see things okay. uh, as well, often as I used to. Yeah, so I had a – man, I forgot to turn off all the sounds. All right, so here's what's been happening. The, here's another reason why I haven't done an episode in a while, and that's why you're hearing some, like, weird Discord noises <laughs> because I haven't completely set this up yet. Um, I kind of narrowed down what I think the issue is with, uh, with, my, with my connectivity and everything, and it most has to do with the fact that Windows bogs the hell down on my laptop. So I decided, hey, let's try putting Linux on here. And it took me a good like month to try to figure out how to put Linux on this thing. I tried yeah. buying a like a giant audio cable so I can just route my audio into here. And I was just like, that's just too much. But I still have the cord in case I need to do it. Um, so it sounds... Where the heck? Oh, I'm in the wrong settings. Anyways, um, so I ended up putting a... a some distros of Linux on here and it, it was just a pain in the ass because my computer set up to be like, oh no, no, we're Windows only. It's like, but I don't want you to be Windows only. So having to go into BIOS and switch things around and nothing worked, none of the none of the user guys helped me at all. 
and I just I just end up stumbling across like a post on some some form, probably Tom's Hardware, I don't know. And uh, you know they were like, oh yeah, we have the same issue. Like here's how to fix it. And I finally got it, got one to install, and I didn't like that Linux because it was running like crap. So I tried like a few different distros, and the one that I ended up liking a lot was something that Brian Sovereign talked about, was just called Zorin, which is fucking yes. awesome. I fucking love this operating system. I'm tempted to put it on my computer, but I still need Vegas, uh, so I can't do it on there. And uh, so yeah, that's 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 another issue. So now I'm trying to figure out a way to get rid of these sounds that keep popping up because I forgot to turn them off before we recorded. <laughs> but hey, whatever works. Oh, fuck geez. it, we'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, uh, so my uh, my video about the non-aggression principle has been getting some kind of like interesting kind of like um, responses to it. Not too many people. I, I, here's what here's what keeps me kind of hopeful. If I had made that video like two years ago, like I would have gotten nothing but vitriol, like absolute vitriol, like, well, I'm going to come to your house and rape your mom and that sort of thing. You know, you said you have no problem with, you know, violations of the nap. It's like, well, that's not what I'm saying. Like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. But now everybody's here is like, oh, okay, here's where I disagree with you on. And everything's like been really polite and civil. And I'm like, wow, this is fucking great. I've had a couple people who who I know are very civil and, and nice say that they were going to do a video response to it, which they have not. One of which, uh, Disenthrall, was like, yeah, I think I need, I need to get him on the show. So he wants to get me on the show so we can have a discussion about it. Where the f- fuck is the sound settings? <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at this thing for a while, like, where the fuck? It should- oh, here we are. The notification. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> now that I got that fixed off air, um, so yeah, like uh, I begin some interesting responses to it, um, and it's it's been kind of enjoyable. And also, people have been sending me some stuff about uh, stuff on Molyneux's UPB, and that stuff's pretty interesting. I don't know, I don't know if you've ever been familiar with UPB. Yeah, I, I well, I think I think we we you and I probably have discussed this at some point in our in our all of our podcasting and radio showing together. I I mean, I was originally a, a kind of a molly bot when i first came into anarchism and stuff like that and uh, i thought upb was the great one of the greatest things i ever heard and then i actually read it again and i was like oh wait a minute this this doesn't make a lot of sense yeah um, <laughs> so uh yeah I've, and then then of course I, I listened to a lot of the stuff that you had to say about it then i went back again i'm like oh yeah this guy's an idiot um, yeah. so uh I've, I've been on the you know been making fun of upb for years now <laughs> yeah it, it's 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 a bit ridiculous but um so, uh, what was it? I was, I was kind of into, into Molly as well. Um, and you know, I had, I'd heard about him. I remember he was on free talk live and at the time I used to play second life and there was a big liber- little libertarian, big little libertarian. It was, it was fairly large, right? <laughs> but, yeah. but not too big, uh, kind of group hangout that used to exist on second life where a bunch of libertarians got together and hung out and listened to like free talk live and stuff. And uh, Stefan Molyneux had popped in for for a uh, for an interview, and uh, like there was this guy that was freaking out there, like, "Oh, this is great! You know, Molyneux's great. I hope that it's going to be fun if they try to ask him about the Free State Project because he hates it." And I was just like, "Wow, this guy's like pretty emphatical. Like, maybe I should check him out." So you know, scrubbed to his YouTube channel, and I was like, "This is like TLDR stuff. This is way too long." And then you know, the whole Zeitgeist thing happened, and he was he was probably the only libertarian besides me. And Jacob Spinney, who was actually making videos about it. Yeah. And so, of course, I watched, started watching his stuff. And then the Cullen shows, I just skipped over. And then I got interested in UPB. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. Um, I like the idea. I never really read the book at the, at the time. And, um, you know, just, just kind of listening to him briefly talk about it in various shows and stuff. And I was like, oh, this makes a whole lot of sense. And then one day I actually sat down and read the book. Once I started becoming a little bit more critical, someone was like, no, no, you have to read UPB, Jim. It's, it's really bad. And I was like, really? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> like, whoa, why, oh, why did I even give this like the time of day? Um, but yeah, like people have been writing like scholarly articles about it. There's been a couple of YouTubers that have been critical of it. There's a biologist by the name of Jean-Francois uh, or Jean, Jean, Fran- I don't know, whatever. He does like this kind of alt-right show called uh, the public space and he did a whole episode about it because he's he's like a moral nihilist and he's interested in philosophy and i was like that sounds about right i don't, I don't agree with them on much else but that's about right yeah <laughs> that sounds about right yeah um 
but yeah, someone sent me like this this article by some guy who who does a lot of philosophical kind of uh, blog po- or like, blog posts, I guess. And he was he he basically kind of summarized like two big points that I have against UPB, but in a much more academic um, way of, of framing it. And I was just like, oh, yeah, 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 you just said what I said, just far more verbose and. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably needed, right? <laughs> Me you just saying, like, made, that's stupid. You made it sound smart is what you're saying? Yeah, you made it sound uh. smart. <laughs> he wasn't trying to dumb it down for a general audience like like I try to do. Well, I'm not – I wouldn't say that I try to dumb things down. I just try – I try to keep my language accessible. I know there's a lot yeah. of YouTube YouTubers out there that try to cram as many $5 words in as they can, it's, and it's like, why are you doing that? Like, you're just confusing most people. Just, just say – like, you could say it like that and then go, like – or or, or or basically and then give give a summarized version of it to help help the people in the nosebleeds but uh, I don't know mm. well some people are uh, a little too convinced of their own intelligence yeah. that they have to you know <laughs> it, it well why would I talk down to the, why would I talk to, why would I yeah I, I can't even speak right now you know why would I sink that low to speak speak to that level? I I don't speak on that level. Everybody should understand the way I speak. That's the type of attitude those people usually have. Yeah, or get um, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the video gamer version of it. <laughs> get good. Um, but yeah, like this blog post, and I'll post a link in it in the in the, in the show notes. But basically, it, it, the criticisms were like um, you know trying to try to make the 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 point that you can't just expect like a, a single sentence to be completely 100 percent um a performative contradiction like i don't exist it's like okay but you can actually say i don't exist and it could be true if you understand what what context is in and the context that he kind of gave an example is like you know like a, a suicide bomber writes like a manifesto or something and says like you know, by the time you read this i do not exist or you know like um or just says like you know I don't exist, but this is you know this is what my my problems is, but which is true, <laughs> which should be true because yeah. he doesn't exist. You know it, it all depends on you know the preconditions that that exist within it. So I was like well, that's, that's kind of good example of what I talk about. And then the other one was uh, the issue he was taken was um, you know that 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 people by arguing with something, you're you're demonstrating. That you prefer truth over falsehood. So if someone says, you know, the Earth is flat, and you say, no, 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 the Earth isn't flat; it's round. You're you're demonstrating UPB because you know you you prefer truth over falsehood. You know, and it's like not really because there's there's many examples, and he even cites a troll example, which is my my usually go to answer. But he also shows some other examples of you know someone arguing, uh, you know, like you know, let, let's say that's true, you know, argumento. <laughs> like let's, let's just say that's true and then argue against that but that you can tell that they don't they don't particularly see it's true but they're still arguing as if it was true you know devil's advocate that sort of thing um yeah yeah so i was just like oh that's a very scholarly uh version of of the some of the criticisms that i've had with upb and it feels kind of like oh i feel kind of vindicated because you know some <laughs> of the things that i and i'm i'm i knew that my criticisms weren't unique or anything even though I felt like I did come up with them when I, after reading it, because that's just what I came to, but it's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> like most people, you know, who who are who understand this stuff would would come to the same conclusion. So it's not like you know I thought of this. This is my ideas or anything. It's just it's just things well, you should know, right? Sure. But yeah. <laughs> well, that that I mean that's that's where I ended up breaking away from all that is is once I started to realize that a lot of those things like you're talking about they, they speak in such absolute terms and like you said all it takes is that one little example that you know wait a minute like the whole performative contradiction is a phrase that is like nails on a chalkboard to me at this point i heard it so much from mm-hmm. all those you know little groupies of his that just keep shouting that at everybody no matter what they say uh, but that's what i started to step away from it because of the once i once i started looking at it a little deeper and going wait a minute th- these are you're making a lot of absolute statements here and I had finally come to the point in my life where I realized that, you know, I don't know anything. So I'm pretty sure most people don't know much of anything. Right. So how can you be so sure about this stuff, man? That doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, you, it, it is good that more people are doing that. It's funny because, you know, you started talking off about the, it started with the nap and how you're seeing more, more and more people are a little more receptive to these criticisms these days. I've seen that, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really follow 
Molly Poo anymore, and I try to ignore his followers like the plague. But as far as the you know with a nap and stuff like that, I, I actually have seen a lot more people, especially I guess maybe in the last year or so, and people that I use that I at least I'm pretty sure at least a couple of years ago were very ardent supporters and and making it a very absolute thing and then you know the nap is god type of stuff and even people like that have started to i've noticed when i do pay attention to social media i've seen posts from them that it's like well well no okay it's a really great rule to live by but it's not this absolute and i'm like wait a minute wait a minute that's what i've been saying for a while and i got that from jim who's been saying that for even longer wait a minute is the tide finally turning yeah. and uh you know like you said it is it's kind of vindicating because i've been you know i I've been shit on for so long by so many of my former friends who are still, uh, even though I try to stay away from this type of language these days, because I don't really think it serves any purpose other than to make me laugh. But like the naptards, you know, the people that are just yeah. so obsessed with it and think it is the the ultimate uh, rule in life. And, uh, you know, it's this absolute thing. Um, I've It's just been nice to see so many more people just starting to drift away from that and going, oh, no, wait a minute. That doesn't make as much sense as we used to think. It's like, oh, yeah, see, you're still thinking. That that makes me happy. Now I want to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah. Because like, at least even, you're questioning it. Yeah, like, there, there, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't go, I don't, I don't know if you're trying to say this. I doubt you are. But I'm not, I wouldn't go so far as to say people who are, so subscribe to the nap are like, you know, automatons who just repeat it over and over again. There are those people. There is a continuum. Oh, yeah, that, no, those, those are the people. ones I was referring to. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that the extreme <laughs> minority of the minority. Yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah but, but someone like Hoppe or Rothbard or something like that, like, I wouldn't say that because because they actually have some, 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 some sound. I wouldn't say valid. Well, well, they have some some valid valid points to make about it, but I, I don't know if they're particularly right, <laughs> they're particularly sound. Um, but I mean, either way, th there's a very difference between that and then you know people just like nope, nope. Nap is the universal objective morality, which I don't I don't even think Rothbard would even go so far as to say that. Um, but. Yeah. So, but but it's not so much that they're being responsive. I mean, there are there are there, to be to be clear, like there are people who are more responsive, and that I've noticed that too. But a lot of people who are still very much of of the NAP will, are still like, oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to unsubscribe from your channel. Uh, that's an interesting cr critique. I don't agree with it. Um, here's what I think is wrong with it. But you know, you know, good video anyway. You know, like I would never expect those those comments two years ago three years ago four years ago back then you know when i first started criticizing the nap like it was just like you know just just mentioning that you know i'm not a fan of the nap it's just like well i guess you're okay with me murdering your family then it's like no that's not <laughs> it's not no stop that's, that's what are you doing not how this works it's not how any of it works it's not how um, mafia works well, maybe, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's a huge, uh, larger segment of our community that's actually growing. <laughs> That'd be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I went through it a few years ago. Maybe the rest of maybe the rest of them are starting to catch up with us. You know. <laughs> maybe. 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 Maybe we'll see. But yeah, I mean, um, when I went to uh, what is it Jack Fest, and I would I you know I mentioned it to a few people there, and they were like, "That's kind of interesting." I, you know, do you want to agree with it? And they, we had some very civil discussions. But you know, had I probably done that at another libertarian, like because I did that at Pork Fest, you know, in 2010, you know, I probably would have got chewed out. <laughs> but I did not get chewed out. Just like, oh, I disagree. Like, like you know, there's a sign when you go to Jack Fest. There's a sign that says, uh, you know, you know, the, the only rule here is don't break the NAP. And I'm like, see, that's I have no problem with that because I like, you know, we all kind of understand what the NAP is, you know, and your conceptualize of, uh, conceptualization of it is correct. But to say that it's some sort of philosophical axiom, like I, I disagree with that. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's my issue with it. And a lot of people are like, oh, OK, that makes a whole lot of sense. But I still disagree with it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's great. Like, it's great that we can have a civil discussion about these things. And we're not just, you know, knee jerk reacting to it. It's we're mature. Well, that is yeah. that is good. Although it it usually is, at least in my experiences, it is easier to have those conversations at those type of events mm -hmm. rather than online. Because, well, just like anything else online, people hide Damn. behind the anonymity and they have no problem screaming at you and telling you you're an idiot and they're going to unsubscribe from you or whatever. But when they're when when you're face to face with them, a lot of these blowhards tend to be a, a little more reserved and are actually they they don't want to you know 
they don't want to act out like that guy that I, I I don't I haven't even seen the video yet, but that guy that what that guy that freaked out in the bagel store recently that's been viral all over the news. It's pretty <laughs> what funny. That, oh, you didn't <laughs> no. see that? There, there, I haven't actually seen the video, but I but I caught the story when I was out because uh, I was traveling again last week. I was out in Michigan for a while. And I saw this story popping up all over the place and people making memes out of this guy. And then I turned to find out it was a bagel store on Long Island. Some guy just went in there and started ranting and raving. He was all pissed off and screaming. About, and when people like he was screaming at the woman behind the counter because he was pissed off about something. And when the other customers in the store tried to you know, calm him down, he started screaming at them about how you're not my dad. You're not you know, you're not my father. You're not my boss. You're not this. You're not that. And it was this tiny little dude who's just r- like ranting and raving. Um, so, of course, like all the memes that came out of is like people are making him look like uh, a member of the lollipop ge- uh, guild or whatever it is from <laughs> Wizard of Oz and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, normally people tend not to act like that in public. (laughs) (laughs) Well, so it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to have those conversations. But like I said, I'm, I'm glad to see that more people are, even if like you, like you said, do, even if they still disagree with you, at least they're willing to talk about it. So it's really nice because I've gotten to the point in my life where I stepped away from a lot of the, just all the drama and all the bullshit. I have just been doing my own thing for the past couple of years, but I do miss engaging with people and having some like I I, I felt that I, I kind of moved beyond the just philosophizing and theorizing bullshit online and I actually wanted to go out and do some of this stuff but there's a part of me that still misses it so it's nice to come back and be able to have these conversations with people and not have people automatically scream at you and and make stupid leaps like you were talking about like mm-hmm. going to like yeah i'm just gonna kill your family type of stuff it's like no <laughs> dude like i i'm not like even, even if i was to stand here and say i i think the nap is stupid i'm still not personally gonna go out and kill your family yeah. that just you know like it, that's not how it works man yeah, yeah. and like you just, just can't go out. like oh a moral nihilist oh then then you must completely you know want everybody to murder everyone all the time it's like well did yeah I say but that, that? <laughs> that well not only did we did you or I not say that but that also stems and this is something I was guilty of for for a while too this it stems from the fact that most people who say that stuff to you don't actually understand what nihilism is yeah kind of the same thing that people who are always ranting and raving about the satanic cults don't actually realize what you know. Mm-hmm. Satanism really is. By the way, hail Satan. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, they they don't get it. Yeah, um, and, and to be fair, I didn't get it either. Like, when I first what? started hearing about people being sat- Satanists, and I was like, man, okay. Like, I, okay, I get it. Like, Satanism, you know... You're just trying to be an edgy person or whatever, but it's like, why would you, why would you like not just subscribe to these these uh, these these beliefs that are crazy or I think are wrong or or terrible or whatever, but you would side with the loser of the battle, the side the side we know is going to lose the giant war. Like, why would you s- side with that person? Like, what is wrong with you? And then, <laughs> and then someone was like, Oh no 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 no! It's like a philosophy book and as and you know he rejects the 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 actual you know what what is it the anthropomorphical you know embodiment of satan it's just yeah. a metaphor and i was like oh and he's like yeah if you like egoism you probably should check this out and i liked it and i was like i actually like this better than egoism <laughs> <laughs> and so i was like all right i'm down and i get, and i get big titty goth girlfriends i'm down sign me up <laughs> <laughs> And, and there's there's something about Satanist girls that are a whole lot better than SJW girls. They just they just are, you know. And I like tattoos and piercings and weird colored hair. It's just sad that most of the girls that have that now want to tell me about, uh, you know, you know the pay the pay wage pay gap and oh god yeah and all that shit. It's <laughs> like, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, us men are terrible. Yeah. So what do you want to go back to your place? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's it. I mean, I, it was similar for me too because I, you know, when I first like Satanism, when I first heard of that, I just, I kind of believed all the, uh, the bullshit that people just put out there because I hadn't read it myself, and obviously they never, never had either. And but even from my position then, when I first came across it, as I considered myself an atheist at the time, I still thought, oh, well, this is horrible. Like, who would want to? De- who would not even just like being on the losing side, but who would want to? Like, okay, fine. Even if you don't, you know, even if I don't believe in God or the devil or any of this stuff, if you're going to believe, why would why would you want to do that horrible stuff? That's just wrong, man. <laughs> we don't. We just... And then I and then I and then I finally read into it. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's that's not what this is about at all. Yeah. So. 
I mean, there are yeah. groups of people who worship the devil and do terrible things. Those people exist. But that's not what Satanism is. That's devil worship. And that's completely different. And we Satanists have a have a have a word for people who worship the devil. You ready for this? Yeah. It's it's very oh. it's a very complicated term. You ready? We call them nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, I think but, that fits. you know, I, I'm I'm even a little bit different than a lot of other Satanists because a lot of other Satanists will do the you know the fedora like go after Christians and you know it's like I, I really don't care if whatever you want to believe that's fine do you know do with that wilt <laughs> that's if that's what makes you happy you know I'm I'm all for it you know there's lots of Christians that I talk to I got a Jewish Jewish guy in my server who is probably not even practicing anymore um, but he was a convert anyway and. Uh, <sighs> And it's just kind of interesting to get like, you know, different perspectives, you know, Catholics. I have Catholics in my server, too, and we talk about all the stuff. But, you know, like one thing I don't do is just go unless unless I'm doing it as a joke. I don't just go like, oh, you know, stupid Christ fag. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's just stupid and annoying and fedora tipping. And every time I see like one of these atheist accounts post like one of their memes, I'm just like, ah. Where's my, where's my Shrek picture? <laughs> Shrek with the fedora picture. I need this right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I I don't know if I'm just if I could just chalk it up to getting older, wiser, or whatever. But yeah, I, I find a lot of that stuff less funny these days too because. I'm not as militant about pretty much anything as I used to be. Yeah. So that's why I was saying earlier. Maybe maybe the maybe maybe there is a shift going on, and maybe more people are uh, are, are growing or. Uh, conversely, maybe we're just maybe maybe the 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 so-called movement isn't is growing as much as it was a couple of years ago. So there's not as many people shifting through the angry anarchist phase. Yeah, I don't know. You know, or or maybe either either way, it's it, it seems like a positive to me because, like I said, I can have more fruitful and uh, positive and uh, fun discussions rather than just screaming back and forth at people yeah, and then the nap, yeah, Silence or whatever. Nap. Yeah, but. As much, as much as I bag on libertarians, there's still a lot of really great ones. It's just that you only hear me talk crap about the about the bad ones. I mean, there's there's lots of them that I do like. Volunteers Japan, I really like. He, in fact, he just did a stream. Oh, Graham. With another, yeah. yeah, I love Graham. He's a great guy. Yeah, I just did another. Uh, just watched him do a stream with uh, Disenthrall, which is another person that I like. Um, you know, I, 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 even though I thought his uh, response to Bitbutter was subpar, he, like, he's, he's a cool guy. Um, Dapperton, which, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of his videos and he knows that I'm not the biggest fan of his videos, but we're cool friends. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like really cool libertarians out there. It's just that, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, just the ones that we used to run into back in the day were just, just, just bad. Jared Howe, oh, Chase Rachel, that, 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 that damn guy. Yeah. Yeah. Can't lie. <laughs> they all kind of went their own little way and, uh, good riddance. <laughs> yes. Good riddance. Yeah, and, and there's some that went far more to the left, which I'm just like, nah. I think the 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 furthest left that I go in terms of libertarians that I like is Brian Sovereign, and he doesn't even like the term libertarian, but it's like, well, what else are you really? <laughs> like you still you still have all pretty much most of the ideas still. You just have some left leanings on things. He's like one of those C4SS kind of guys. But uh, yeah, I like Brian. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the C4SS stuff, but you know, Brian's cool. <laughs> but his taste but his taste in music and movies are just <laughs> oh my god what are you doing stop stop this now oh by the way have you seen midsummer yet no i don't even know what that is <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's it's an interesting movie i didn't i wouldn't say that i liked it i mean there was there was a big issue with this movie that uh, kept me from really liking it, and that was just the character development. But everything else about the movie, like the the, the screenwriting was great. The cinematography was beautiful. I mean, like every scene in this movie, even the parts that were like, gruesome were like, that was beautifully shot and vivid. <laughs> and oh, like, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's about this girl who had some trauma. Like the, the story opened, like the movie opens up with some girl. She's like, I, I can't get my sister to respond to me. Like I sent her like four emails. It's been a, like, you know, it's been like a day or whatever. You know, and this this email seems weird, and her boyfriend's like, yeah, whatever. She's bipolar. You shouldn't be feeding into it. She's like, she's like, but even you said this this message was weird, and you know, she's like having a panic attack. She takes Ativan. You know, she takes some some Ativan. You know, so you can be like, okay, she's she's kind of crazy or whatever, or she has issues, and um, and she's trying to figure out like what's going on. She keeps calling everybody, 
and then like um you know the boyfriend is you know hanging out with his friends they're like you should dump her man she's she's like a she's a drag on you or whatever and, you know the next call she gets is her like screaming and they show you know like the firemen coming into the garage there's there's hoses tied all the way up up the stairwell going into one under underneath the bed where the parents are sleeping and it's taped up you know and the other one's going directly into her mouth and she's dead and there's like vomit all over her chest and everything and it was like oh it's going to be one of those movies <laughs> because i had no expectations of this movie i had no idea what was going on in this movie the whole time but she ends up you know she's dealing with that trauma and her boyfriend, you know, her talk, her talk, it's a toxic relationship, but not toxic. Like he's not like beating her or anything. It's just, they're like, uh, they're codependent and they're just really not a good match for each other. And they use each other as an excuse to dump their problems on. And it's just not a very good, healthy relationship, but they go to Sweden with one of their friends while this other guy's doing a dissertation. The other guy is like, Oh, I just want to meet some hot, you know, Swedish chicks. But, uh, so they go over there and it, turns out to be like this this weird death cult <laughs> and it's just and like you're just slowly start unraveling the story as it goes and like there's there's like very um i wouldn't say gr- like it's not like one of those movies where there's blood splattering everywhere and crazy but like you know they show you like what would happen if if an old lady jumped off of a cliff and smashed her head on a rock what would it look like realistically and they would show it or like, what wow. would happen if they smashed, the, you know, her husband's face in with a with a with a mallet? <laughs> well, they show it, and you know, and everybody's like freaking out except for you know the cult who were which they're all happy, like oh their time has come, and you're just <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and they're all taking drugs, and it's and the 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 scenery is beautiful. Like they keep doing like these these really neat, beautiful shots of like different parts of the the little community that they're that they're in. Even when terrible things are happening, it's very well shot. The whole thing takes place during the day because in Sweden during the summer, there's like almost no nighttime. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. It's it's an interesting movie. I, I recommend people go see it, even though I didn't like it because I think the character development was very poor for the main characters. But other than that, everything else is perfect. And uh, I like where horror is going these days with movies like Us. And I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of a trip. So yeah. let's talk about: Does this violate the nap? <laughs> Should we turn into that libertarian show? <laughs> yes. Oh, please, can we? <laughs> oh, um, oh! You went to a hot sauce convention. I, I noticed oh, this because someone you went with was wearing a Lulbert shirt and was passed oh, out on the that, floor. Yes. And, yes. and I commented before I deleted my Facebook. I commented, <laughs> uh, which by the way, I deleted Facebook completely. Um, yeah, I, I commented like, "You're not fit to wear that shirt." And then, like, the next picture was him uh, with uh, Sean Evans from Hot Ones, and I was like, I, "I retract that statement. You are now fit to wear that shirt." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. Well, there's actually more to that story too, because oh, yeah, we. I, I went. I went, and the, actually, the that that's my buddy Jason, who I actually one of the people I took out to the to the fest with me this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, him and his girl. Well, his girlfriend Rachel, who's also a friend of mine, is really great at like scouring the internet and finding all these crazy deals and all these weird, like all these kind of like in some circles, very obscure events that just pop up. But she's like the first one to know about all of them. She's just mm-hmm. really great at hunting this down. She, she's, and all of all the, Is it sort of that? like? Is it almost like? Not exactly, but is it almost like like extreme couponing? Kind of, okay. yeah. She's just, she's just really great at this. <laughs> okay. And she and all three of us are, are big hot sauce freaks. So she found out about the fact that apparently there's this annual expo out in Brooklyn that none of us had ever heard of. But I think this was like the fourth or fifth one they've had now. And they, you know, big hot sauce expo. So we were all excited. We all, you know, I went online, got my ticket from Groupon for like five bucks or whatever. I was super stoked. And we all go down there, and for some reason none of us thought it was a good idea to eat before we went <laughs> we were all just like oh they'll be serving food it'll be you know whatever we'll be eating there and stuff we'll be tasting stuff no. we'll be fine no. so the three of us and one of their other friends all hop in the car and drive over to brooklyn and we get out there oh, no. and we go in we get we get there shortly after opening and we start making our rounds because it's in one of those big expo centers you're basically just walking around a giant loop tasting you know stopping all the little booze and tasting what they got and people have their hot sauce and they have hot chocolates and you know like all you know anything you know pretty much everything you could think of 
And we're going round and round and tasting all this stuff and having some crazy ass hot, you know, pretty heated stuff. And we're all fine. And then we stopped to watch. They had a chocolate eating challenge where they had, the, you know, wh- oh, whichever know company was selling. Yeah, know, whichever company was selling. Yeah. And it was that was probably one of the funniest things of the event because, I mean, you could see the people sweating as they're eating this stuff. There was this one very large uh, uh, black guy who was singing it like he was like he was screaming the entire time that he's going to be kicking everybody's ass. And it was just really funny because he like ha- like after like four or five of these chocolates that he's shoving in his mouth, he's literally stripping on stage. <laughs> and he ended up in pretty I think he was down to oh, he might have been down to his shorts or his boxers. I don't even remember. But the shirt came off and he's dancing around because he is just you can see he's dying. He did not make it very long. It was just <laughs> it was really funny to watch um, because he, he, he tapped out pretty early. And I ended up having a piece of this chocolate later on. And then I realized why everybody was in so much pain up there on the stage, because even the little chip I had was one of the hottest things I've ever tasted. Uh, but anyway, so we keep, you know, we watch the hot sauce, we watch the hot chocolate eating contest and, you know, we go out and we're, you know, hanging out and we got a little bit of food, but then we went right back in and we're tasting. And then we come up to where they're, where they're, you know, selling the, the chocolates and they have obviously samples out there. So each of us grabs a little chip and we're like, damn, that's really fucking hot. And unfortunately the very next stand next to that, they had the hellfire sauce mm. And all, you know, all Jason and I being the manly men that we are, we're like, oh, we can handle this. When the guy asks, which one do you want? We're like, give us the hot one. So I hand like they have the you know little tortilla chips or whatever that they have out for you to put the sauce on. So we each ha- we hand the guy the chip and the guy like not really paying attention pretty much covers my chip, both of our <laughs> chips in this sauce. And the two of us just kind of look at each other. We're like, all right, we pop them in our mouths. And then we hear one of the other guys behind that counter tell explaining the hot sauce to another customer and saying how yeah this thing's going to take you on a journey and it's not going to hit right away but you'll see (laughs) and sure enough as we're listening both of us start like it start then it starts kicking in and like we were both like i ran for the milk stand because they were (laughs) But they were giving out free milk and I'm like downing milk. I'm like, this was this was insane. But like after about 10 minutes, it finally started to subside. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling better. So at this point, we had made our way through most of it. We're like, all right, we're going to go outside for one last cigarette and then maybe we'll get going. So we all go outside and sit down in this big uh, empty. It wasn't a parking lot, but it was a big, uh, big empty, like uh, whatchamacallit concreted area where everybody was hanging out eating and smoking or whatever so we all sit down and then all of a sudden i look over and i realize jason has literally fallen down and he's laying on his side grabbing his his stomach and not saying anything but moaning and whatever and we're all like dude with you know what's going on and like it didn't click with any of us right away (laughs) <laughs> and after about you know after about eight minutes eight to ten minutes of this now people are staring at us because we're like dude like he's not talking and we're like man what, what's going on and at, at a certain point now i'm just like i'm feeling a little cocky because i still feel okay so i'm like that's when i slapped the picture and i was like ah oh, somebody couldn't handle the sauce and i didn't even realize <laughs> that he, i didn't even think about the fact that he was wearing a lulbert shirt until you commented <laughs> on it but so after we finally get him up, which, and by the way, he, are available at store.lulberts.com. <laughs> there you go. So so eventually we Shame get him up blood. and get moving. And, and he was the one who drove. So we had to wait for him to be OK enough to finally, like, drive again. <laughs> and finally, he's like, all right, man. He's like, that, he's like, yeah, that was really weird. He's like, that was so painful. He's like, it was horrible. But I think I'm OK. So we start driving and I'm like, wow, man, like, uh, you know, I, I'm like. I'm like, yeah, I posted a picture on you. I'm like, okay, we made it a little funny. I'm like, I do feel bad, though. That, that really must have sucked. But we're still joking about it or whatever. Yeah. We start driving through Brooklyn. Within 10 minutes, all of a sudden, I start feeling this pain. Uh- <laughs> and I'm like, uh-oh. And, like, I'm trying to hold it in. But at one point, I just grab. I was in the, I was sitting shotgun. I just grabbed Jason's arm. I'm like, dude, pull the car over. He's like, what? I'm like, dude, pull the fucking car over. He's like, I don't even know. I'm like, I don't care if you don't know where we are. Just pull the fucking car over. <laughs> he pulls the car over and some like we're in some. I don't even remember where we were. Some random street in Brooklyn. I literally just fell out of the car and I'm writhing around <laughs> on the sidewalk. <laughs> and yeah, I got my comeuppance for making fun of him because it was it was the worst pain I've ever had from eating anything in my life the, it was just yeah the cramps it was just it was so painful like no position i could get in did it stop it just like i had to keep twisting and contorting myself yep until i could finally catch a breath 
And uh, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never had that. I mean, I've tried some really super hot stuff in my day and lots of it. and never had the cramps. So I don't know if I'm immune from it or maybe I haven't had s- s- enough of hot stuff yet. I mean, but I've done hot wing challenges and all that stuff. And Yeah, I've done it too. And I, I went there intending to do that because they were having among the uh, besides the chocolate eating challenge, they were having a couple other ones. And one of them was a pizza, you know, a hot wow. sauce pizza eating contest. And I was actually going to enter that. Because I was all psyched about that one. Because I've same thing. I've done challenges before. Mm-hmm. I used to go. There was a bar in the city called down in New York City called Down the Hatch that I used to go to back in the day when I was still big into the sports ball stuff. Where they had like this deal on Saturdays and Sundays where it was like it started when we first started going years ago. It was like fifteen bucks, all the wings and all the beer you could drink from noon to five. Oh my god, I need this and in you, my life. And we would go that we, you know, but by now I'm sure it's up to like $30 or over, but what, whatever, sure. it was still a great, okay. even as the prices kept going, but, but we used to go there for like March Madness and stuff like that to go hang out and watch the games on a, on a, you know, on the weekends and you just, you get stupid drunk and you just eat and they had a board from, uh, of hot wings from zero to 100. They had a hundred different levels wow. of heat and, you know, we would go in there and I think the farthest I ever made it up to was somewhere in the mid eighties before I finally tapped out, but I've done all this stuff. So I didn't think anything of it, but yeah, folks, if you're ever going to do this stuff, make sure you eat something first. Cause that was what finally took the pain away from me. Like after about 10 minutes of riding on the sidewalk, I was finally able to crawl into the car. We drove about another 10, 15 minutes, finally got in the got on the parkway, got stuck in traffic. It started hitting me again. I'm like crawling over the back seat, sticking my head in the back in between my two friends who are sitting back there, just groaning and moaning. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until like hour, like an hour later when we finally got home and I was able to eat something that everything finally started to go back to normal. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Yeah, oh. there's so, a yeah. there's a wing place here that does like a challenge, and um, there's I don't know if I don't know if you follow uh, YouTube hot stuff uh, channels, uh, but there's this guy named Brian Ames, I think his name, and you know he, he mm. they review different hot sauces and sour stuff, and you know the the extreme stuff, and uh, he he went there and and did the cha- uh, didn't do the challenge, but uh, someone else did the challenge. Oh, no, no, no. He tried to do the challenge. He got through like one wing and he was like, no, I'm done. This is too much for me. This is this is insane. This is just pure extract. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And he said like uh, he 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 considered actually going to the hospital after that because he started getting wow. like extreme cramps. He was like, I, it was I probably I probably should have gone to the ER, but, I, you know, but it was something that I was definitely considering going to the ER because it was that bad. And I was like, well, wow. I have I have my work cut out for me because I, I have to do that. <laughs> that's one of the things my friend wants me to do. Baron wants me to do. <laughs> I, I think really it's just be, going back to what we were talking about. You know how how people on the internet are anonymous and they're they're a little bit more to be a little bit more vitriol. I'm not like that. I'm I'm the reverse. Like in real life, I'm much more hostile than I am on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell people to their face like that's stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You know, unless I'm at work or something like that, where I'm not allowed sure. to do stuff like that. Um, but Baron will test to like the, he'll say something you know that I disagree with, and I won't just be like, well, I think that's wrong. I'll be like, that's the what you just said is the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. <laughs> you should feel bad for saying it. <laughs> but he but he understands me, and he knows he knows that like you know I'm only I'm only half joking. <laughs> like yeah yeah yeah, but yeah um, I don't know. Uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, um, oh! I don't know. We were talking about the cha- the challenges and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think I think like oh yeah, that's what, so I think at the end of the day, that's what it really boils down to. He's like he wants to see me do those challenges. Get my comeuppance for just <laughs> for being such a such an asshole sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, I mean, I, I'm sh- I'm sure I deserve it for a multitude of reasons, but you know that day in particular, I definitely deserved it for <laughs> taking a picture of my friend and then posting it online and saying, "Ah, look who couldn't handle the sauce." Um, but yeah, man, uh, like could, look, I mean, you're, if you. Yeah, exactly. If, if I mean, you're lucky you've never gone through that. I, I didn't even think about it's funny. I didn't even think about going to the ER or anything like that. But it definitely was the most pain I've ever been in my life, possibly from anything that's ever happened to me, definitely from eating stuff. And like I said, I've been doing I mean, I started off relatively young at like 11 or 12 years old 
when I used to work with my dad and my uncle with my uncle's construction company in the summer and we would go out for pizza at, you know most days well, at the end of the day we would go to get you know go get dinner at the pizza place and back then we, you know that's when I started off when my dad and my uncle used to have the you know the hot pepper eating challenge where they would just put you know pour basically a handful of hot pepper flakes oh and then and then eat them and then see who could go the longest without taking a drink like that's how I started so ever since then I've always loved uh you know spicy food and uh hot sauces and stuff like that although i am definitely a more of a proponent of flavor over over heat yeah um, well, um I, th- I think there should be good balance i mean i'll, I'll take like a hit well no yeah no if it's good oh no i, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like like for, well i mean i i went to taco bell yesterday for the first time in like forever just because i was hungry and i was i didn't feel like going to make anything anywhere which is a little bit harder these days that i'm living back out in my car again mm-hmm and i try like apparently they now have a diablo sauce i guess it's been yeah. that long since i've been to taco bell <laughs> and i tried it i was like wow this is actually this is actually on a heat level that i prefer but i didn't like the flavor of it but uh but, yeah. nor- but normally yeah i i do like I, I like as hot as i as as hot as i'm willing to let it go but it has to have flavor which actually on 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 that note my my buddy jason the one who i made fun of um and got paid back for it he actually just started making his own hot sauce Ooh, send but but send. He, but he's Do but, he, but he's making free ad for hold it. on hold on hold on hold on he's making a cannabis hot sauce oh i'm pass oh well uh, let me tell you i i you know for whatever <laughs> reasons plenty plenty of people pass on it but it's actually one of the most delicious sauces i've ever tasted he actually made his first batch before the fest and brought it out with him, and he sold out of it, I think, uh, over there. And he was charging a decent amount of money for it, too, like 30 bucks a bottle because it's cannabis-based. But, oh, my God, is it delicious. Yeah. Um, my, my issue with that is, like, sure, maybe heat, whatever, but I'm sure it tastes good. But, by, you know, my issue is not that I'm going to be on the floor, you know, holding in the cramps. My, my issue is that I'm going to be on the floor fucking swearing that, you know, SWAT teams are about ready to bust in my door. Oh, no. no it's, well, yeah, that's right. You have that, you have that paranoia Yeah, issue. I get no, it's not even rippling you would have, paranoia when I smoke weed. I'm so. pretty sure. I mean, I I'm somebody who smokes regularly, so it would probably take a lot to affect me. But I'm pretty sure you'd have to swig at least half a bottle for this to actually have that kind of effect uh, okay. on you. Well, I don't if know. You're just if, uh, maybe we, edibles are. I would know. I had because. Oh yeah, well no edibles. Yeah, but like I said, I we I know a number of people who aren't smokers at all that were at the fest who actually tried it and uh, loved it and said you know just because they're putting a little bit on. But anyway, yeah. I just thought that was you know maybe it was like CBD. In there, I still haven't thing. I still haven't done any CBD. I'm like uh, except for like my friend let me try his vape pen. He was like here try this because I think this is this is the issue that you're having. It's just that all these we- like they've been trying to grow weed with such high THC that they never bothered to to raise any of the other chemicals that are in there that kind of help balance things out. And uh, he, he let me try it, and it was, like, really high CBD, like, vape oil. It still had THC in it, too. And, like, I got high, and I was like, oh, I feel fine. I feel good. You know, I'm not – I don't feel like I'm going to get in trouble for doing this inside of a bar where we're not actually allowed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, I wasn't paranoid about anything, and I was just like, oh, I feel good. Probably shouldn't try it, but I feel good, you know, because, like, I'm, I've always been ultra sensitive to weed. I, 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 even when I used to grow weed and I used to smoke hash all day – didn't matter even when i tried to like up my tolerance it couldn't do it could not do it but um i don't know yeah well this the cbd is is definitely a much different experience it's, it's funny i was actually having this conversation briefly in one of my group chats on telegram this morning because uh, uh somebody in there actually just tried it for the first time the other day and was raving about the fact that like of all the things he's ever tried and i don't think he has the paranoia ish uh, paranoia you do but he's somebody that for whatever reason just hasn't every time he's tried smoking uh you know just THC type stuff uh he, it's always had a negative effect on him he's, he hasn't liked it and he was just raving about it and a bunch of other people are asking questions because i've tried both forms i've tried taking it orally like the tinctures and stuff like that and i've tried vaping it and i find that the vaping it actually has a uh much better effect on me mm-hmm. the oral stuff almost i'd probably have to swig like a half a bottle of it to actually have any effect mm-hmm. but i've gotten ones that are straight cbd no thc whatsoever because that's what i get for my daughter who i who we give it to for her seizures and stuff like that and just the straight cbd and again i'm somebody who has you know smoked cannabis for 20 years now almost on a pretty much on a daily basis that entire time uh but just the straight cbd with no thc vaping it i actually find has a you know it's very relaxing 
Mm. And uh, I've actually I've used it for pain in the past. The only reason I stopped doing that is because I found out that uh, red kratom works a lot better for me for stuff like that. So if I actually have pain, I would rather use that. But I used to keep even when I was still vaping uh, nicotine, I used to keep a spare cartridge around with just CBD in it that would that I would pop on my battery every once in a while. And even though I smoke pretty regularly, uh, there would be times where I'd be like, you know, driving around or whatever, and I would start to feel a little pain or, you know, something just felt off. And I would just be like, all right, I'll put that on, take a couple of hits. And all of a sudden, you know, I wasn't high, but I felt good. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, a lot of people me to try finding... CBD and that it's really great. And I just haven't got around to doing it because I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to spend 20 bucks on something on that that I'm not really sure about. Mm, eh, I'll pass. And, uh, Kratom, I haven't done Kratom in a while. Now I only use Kratom additionally. Like if I like if my, my knee goes out, because occasionally like once a year, like I have I'll have like an issue with my knee. Like I have a knee brace that I wear like once a year, you know, when my mm-hmm. knee starts to act up. But sometimes it gets really bad. Um and uh you know, I'll just I'll just take a couple of Kratom and then like once my knee starts getting feeling better, I'm good for the rest of the year. I don't touch the stuff. But uh yeah, like I know there's been a lot of people who have contacted me because I used to talk about Kratom and doing Kratom a lot. Uh, cause, and I said that, you know, the, the withdrawal effects of Kratom are like that of caffeine. And people have t- been telling me horror stories. You know, people who, really? t- who used to tell me like, oh, yeah, Kratom's great, Jim. You should try it. Have come back and said, no, 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 no. Like, I've been ha- I've had like really bad withdrawal issues, but that I don't I won't touch the stuff anymore. And I'm like, really? Wow. Yeah. I hadn't heard. I hadn't heard anything about that. Yeah. And then uh, a lot of people have been saying that as well. And then there's like some YouTuber that used to talk about Kratom all the time. And he also talks about various other types of like drugs and stuff. And he's even come out and said, like, I don't touch Kratom anymore. Like, <laughs> it's just like, wow. So, I mean, like, I mm. guess it really depends on the person. I don't think it should be illegal or anything. Um, I just. Oh, of course I, not. And I always just tell people, like, just be cautious because that could happen to you. I mean, you could be like me where getting off of it's just like, you know, a little mild caffeine headache going on your day. And then there's other people yeah. who say that like, you know, they're getting like really bad headaches and like it makes them unable to function unless they ha- have some more. And it's just like, whoa. All right. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to look into that. Cause I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't use it regularly. I never, I never actually really used it any it, with any regularity. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think I've ever, I can't recall, uh, you know, having any withdrawal symptoms at any point whatsoever. I don't even have any on me. I actually realized I had forgotten I had some stored in my car mm. that I had looked long forgotten about. And I found it when I was down. Uh, like I said earlier in the show, I, I spent a month down in, in Pensacola with my buddy Merrick. And uh, while I was down at his place, I found it because we were doing work on my car. And I, I was like, oh, look, I have some Kratom. And then I must have left it there because when I, when I got halfway back to New York, I was like, where'd that Kratom go? Oh, I think it's still sitting on his, uh, one of his counters in his garage. But, uh, you know, I hadn't been using it. But I like you, like you were saying, the only time I would use it was really for things that is like I would use the red for pain issues. And I used to use the green. It was, I mean, not even regularly, regularly, but just when I was still doing the fiends on a regular basis, I would use that instead of coffee at night uh, before the show so that I would be able to have enough energy for that one o'clock in the morning show and then not have the call, co- not have to come down from the coffee high afterwards. Um, but I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to look more into this because I, even though I have never used it regularly, I was because of my experiences with it and because of the positive experiences of so many other people I knew, I had still been recommending it to people all the time. I need to be more careful about that if this is a if yeah, this yeah. is a real issue. So just just be careful. I mean, like if you haven't had any withdrawal issues, you're probably in the clear. But just yeah, like just be careful when you're telling. Oh yeah, no, well, I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm gonna be more careful about telling people. Oh yeah, they should take the you know get off whatever other pain reliever they're on and just switch to that. You know, yeah. that's obviously a bad idea. Um, you but know. speaking of the fiends and CBD, should we go there? Oh, I don't know. Should we? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I won't. I won't be harsh. How about that? I. You can do whatever you want, man. Okay. I. I mean, I, I'm. I'm all. I'm all for. I'm all for you handling it however you want because it was a completely unnecessary and stupid attack and accusation. But whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, I, the, the Lulbirds actually did come out of another show called The Freedom Fiends, which was a nationally syndicated talk radio show. I think at its peak, it was on 36 stations. I think it's still on, too, even though the show is gone now. Uh, he doesn't do the show yes. anymore. For for, for, a, for over a year, we've been off the air. Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't we haven't recorded a new episode, and they st- yeah, they're still playing us, as far as I know, in a couple of the northern 
western now the midwestern northern like i don't know north dakota or south dakota or somewhere yeah. over there so yeah um so so to kind of give some backstory um there was a uh, an ex-girlfriend of adam kokesh by the name of macy tomlin who made a gofundme account or made a gofundme thing because she wanted to raise money so that she could um afford to to pay someone to teach her how to be an ayahuasca shaman in peru and oh I, yes and i was just like well whatever but when she started making claims like you know that that ayahuasca cures cancer and like all this other just bogus like uh health claims about ayahuasca look i understand that like some people can use various different types of psychoactive drugs to, to help them with their traumas or help them with addiction or things like that there, there's evidence to show that that's all true but things like curing cancer not so much so um i decided to do you know the right thing and to make fun of it you know and i i that's why you there's a video on my channel called like help me raise money to be a wine sommelier um, and basically I had <laughs> God, like I remember that. <laughs> Christmas lights around my head and I was like, you know, like I want to, I just, basically I just wanted to get drunk every day. <laughs> like that's, that was basically the joke of the thing. Uh, and kind of, and I was saying that like wine cures cancer and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I, Wait, it doesn't? I, no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> if anything, it'll cause cancer. Damn it. Um, <laughs> like everything causes cancer really. But anyways, um, you know, so that was the joke, and then I had a GoFundMe attached to it as well, and like someone, I think James Babb gave me like five bucks, and that was about it. Well, someone had reported it, and I assumed at the time that that was Macy Tomlin's mad at me for uh, making fun of her, which I was wrong in that assumption. Sure. I think I figured out who really did it, and uh, I'm not going to mention them by name because they're pretty much gone from the internet now. But uh, I believe oh. that they thought, and I have no evidence to show that they did it, but I, I do know that they thought that I was the one responsible for um, flagging their Patreon account, which at the time I was doing everything I could to ignore this person because he was kind of stalkery and creeperish. Some people who actually know me and talk to me in real life probably know who I'm talking about now. And so I think that he, he did it in the end. But at the time, I thought it was Macy Tomlin. So I ended up reporting her uh, GoFundMe as well. Nothing came of it. Like, it didn't get taken down. And I, I bragged mm. about it on the Lulberts. And then later, I went on the Fiends and bragged about it. And uh, Michael W. Dean and James Weeks were like, no, Jim, that's kind of fucked up. You shouldn't have done that. And I was like, really? And they explained to me, you know, off air, uh, you know, why it was a bad thing. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, well, I guess, you know, nothing happened. So that's that's good. You know, I probably shouldn't have done that. I was wrong. And I felt really bad about it. And that's like one of the things that I felt really bad about doing. I shouldn't have done that. But mm. whatever. Nothing bad came of it. She still raised her money and she still went off to, you know, do drugs in, in Peru, which is but well, that's what she wanted to do. That's fine. I have no problem with that. I do have a problem with the spurious, you know, health claims or whatever. And so that was what, two years ago? You know, yeah, everyone since least, moved yeah. on. No one even cared. Macy didn't care. Nothing cared because nothing happened. And, you know, I felt bad about it. Everybody kind of moved on. The end. Right? No. Well, apparently, uh, Michael Dean was. Michael Dean has been raising, who was the head of uh, the Freedom Fiends, or the main host of the Freedom Fiends. Um, uh, I guess he's he's sick again. I, apparently, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know because I don't follow him. I have him blocked, and I, I try to avoid him um, for various reasons, which I'm not going to get into. And uh, so, I guess he had to go fund me for CBD or uh, for CBD oil because he's sick, and he says that's the only thing that helps him, and his insurance doesn't cover it, and you know, usual stuff that happens you know, when Michael Dean gets sick. And mm -hmm. um, which is fine. I have no issue with that either, as well. Um, but I guess it got flagged down because the GoFundMe doesn't know that CBD is like legal in the United States. It, you know, um, you know, they just classified it as not being cannabis, technically being can uh, being marijuana. So now you can buy it at any, any, any gas station across the country, unless it's illegal in that particular state. Um, and he was raising money for it because it helps him. And I'm not going to call him a liar for saying it helps him. I'm pretty sure it does help him. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't really know too much about CBD. Uh, and uh, it got taken down and uh, it said that someone flagged it. And uh, he went on the uh, was it Free Talk Live, which is a nationally syndicated talk radio show and cap nationally syndicated talk radio show over on 165 stations. Last I checked, I'm sure it's yeah, more now. Not, and I, yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, I, I believe it's more than that. Not only that, I think uh, there, there was a lot of bragging going on recently. I think they're like the number they're in the, they're in the, like the top tw or maybe the top 25 yeah. in the country. 
of, of like they're actually like they're getting a lot you know free talk live is pretty big at this point they're definitely getting in a lot of ears so this was this was definitely heard <laughs> very yeah. far and wide so uh you know i i did and i don't really don't listen to it that often like occasionally like if if the title on the show like on youtube is like interesting like if they're going to talk about something that i'm interested in like some news story that happened or some movie that came out and they're talking about the Talking about it, like, oh, God, I listen to that episode. It's very rare that I do. But um, but I, I don't follow Michael Dean, and I, I don't really care anything about what he does or what he's been doing at all, and at all, and I, I just don't care. <laughs> and then uh, next thing I know, I started getting a couple emails after the show, that last show aired, you know, that day, um, from pingbacks from WordPress. Because if you have a WordPress site, which Lulberts is hosted on a WordPress site, uh, the back end is WordPress, uh, if... If someone like links to one of your posts on on uh, on the fucking WordPress, so I can't think, I can't talk right now. What the fuck? It sends you a message saying like, "Hey, there's a pingback on this WordPress blog. You should go check it out." And here's a link to it. And mm. it was saying like, uh, "It said Jim Jesus reported my GoFundMe page," and I'm like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, all right, what is he on about now? And I went and listened to the episode, and he was like, yeah, I think it was Jim Jesus, because he did that to Macy Tomlinson, and he enjoys like doing the stuff because he's a terrible person. And I'm like, what the fuck? Uh... <laughs> and, I, and I fucking had to like tell him, like, no, you idiot. Like, I didn't do that. You already know that I felt bad about that, because you're the one that told me that I should feel bad about that. It convinced me to feel bad about that, and I did feel bad about that, and I still feel bad about that. Like, why are you bringing up old shit? Like, I don't give a fuck about you. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, go and correct the record. And he was just like, he's like, even after all that stuff you said to me right now, I, I, was like, I probably shouldn't, but I still am. I'm like, no, you, shil- you still should. You're, you're going and yeah. defaming somebody and you have no evidence. You say that you had no evidence. You admit, like, in the original post, like, I have no evidence that he did it, but, you know, I think that he did and here's why. It's like, that's... Just go and correct it, and then uh, so he goes and corrects it in the worst possible way by saying, "Yeah, Jim Jesus is a terrible person, and he's done worse in the past, and he's you know he's happy to admit it." So that's why I think he don't he didn't do it anymore. It's like what the fuck have I done? That's worth, <laughs> what are you talking about, Michael? Uh, oh my god, just shut up and go away. <laughs> like, uh, like I quit the fiend so I didn't have to deal with this stuff anymore. <laughs> and here I am dealing with this stuff now. It's like the freedom fiends doesn't even exist. Michael, calm down, well, chill the fuck out. No one, no, none of us, none of us who've been kicked off the show or fired or quit really cares about what you're doing. None of us are like that vindictive. We don't even think about you. Just move on. Like I hadn't, I didn't even know that the Freedom Beans like stopped podcasting until like months <laughs> afterwards when you told me, and I was like, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So like I, I don't think about it or talk about it anymore. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, un- unfortunately. <sighs> And I, I mean, it's so funny. Every time I say this, then I, I realize I, I catch myself. I'm about to preface it. I still like Michael. <laughs> I usually I usually start off with a lot of my comments these days with, about, with him about like that. Um, and you know, him and I obviously had our issues in the past, but overall, I haven't. You know, he hasn't really done anything to me personally. But he does. Yeah, he does stuff like this all the time. And I, I think, unfortunately, yes, the fiends have been off the air for a while, but. I don't think he has anything to do anymore. So when problems arise, what's he going to do? He has to blame the people that he used to blame, and you know, yeah. Unfortunately, this is this is this is this is not a new thing for him. This is a normal tactic. Anytime something goes wrong, if it's not, you know, something directly that's his fault or whatever, and he's go, it, there's somebody else did it to him. His, you know, his suspect list is always the people that somehow wronged him in the past. Mm -hmm. It has to be one of them. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, while I still like the guy, he's pissed a lot of people off over the years. So it could be any number of people that did this to him. And like, I I think I told you when you mentioned this to me when when yesterday, I was like, yeah, I caught wind of it, but I didn't pay it any attention because my immediate reaction was like, this is just Michael being being my Michael. And why did he what, like Jim? Why did he go after Jim again? Like I don't even want to get involved because you know you and I are friends, yeah. and I still consider yeah. him a friend. I'm like I that's am why not I was like hesitant to like bring. This I don't want to deal not- with it. I don't even want to talk about it. I didn't want to respond to him when he tags me and stuff like that. I ignore it. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I was much more vitriol on Twitter than I was talking about it here, just because I knew that you guys are friends, and I'm not trying to get you to turn against them. <laughs> no, I know, <laughs> so I, I know. Like, but he, like I said, he angle. was, it was, it was completely stupid. And like you said, I, I, I didn't even catch the the apology <laughs> as as it was. Uh, but I could, as soon as you explained it, I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds like typical Michael. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, he didn't do this terrible thing, but he's also still a terrible. It's like. You should have just went on there and said, "Hey, man! Yesterday, I I said that so, you know I was talking about my health issues and blah blah blah, and I, I said that it was this guy Jim Jesus, and I had no evidence for it, and now I realize that I was wrong for accusing him of doing that. I shouldn't have done that. And anyway, so b- back to my my issues, and I mean, even the guys on Free Talk Live were just kind of like ended up cutting him off and going like, "Yeah, that, that sounds terrible, Michael." Right, anyways, moving on to the next call because like he kept trying to go on well, more and more about me, and they were just well, kinda, you can tell well, in their voices like. What the fuck? Who, who, who gives a shit about this little this little spat you're having <laughs> on Twitter? Like, well, who was gives it, a shit? Was it Ian and Mark? No, it was some other guy. I, I don't know who. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think because I was gonna say because because Ian was there the first Ian's time given, though. He was there the first. Well, because Ian's Ian's given him a platform obviously for yeah. a very long time, but I know even Ian has his limits with Michael. He's yeah. just like, all right, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> but they're even there. They kind of like end up cutting him off like mid sentence and was like, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna, so we're gonna move on to the next call. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, because it just kept going on about me, and it's just like, stop. well, like I said, I, you, I you think unfortunately, up. just just say that you fucked up. That you don't need to like go on about how you know how I'm a terrible person, and, I, and uh, you were right for assuming that it was me. Like, no, you were just wrong all around. Just fucking drop it and move on. Like, honestly, I I don't care. I really don't care, and I don't think most people do. But when I posted that on Facebook, there was a lot of ex fiends that started coming around, going like, oh yeah, 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 he did the exact same thing to me. Um, including people that you probably wouldn't even expect were even telling me that, you know, like Davi really? was telling me like, yeah, like he said some bullshit about me. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I, he's oh, like, wow. he's like, I, I was, he's like, he's like, I, I figured I wouldn't even bother mentioning it because I figured people who know Michael would see the pattern. People who are smart enough would notice the pattern and ignore it. And I was yeah, like, well, yeah, it makes sense. Like yeah. I said, I've, I've, I've seen it happen to plenty of people cause I, I came in later, but I stuck around longer than a lot of people. So, like, I was still clo- I was still close to it for a long time, and I saw it happen over and over and over. Yeah. You know, and it was it was it was first first you know it was it was everything was Bab's fault for a while, um, or or MK's. Um, although you know MK does a lot of stuff to herself. That's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> um, Not getting or, into that. Or one. you know you. Not getting into that. Yeah, I, well, or, <laughs> of course. Uh, but you uh, or you know you you've been the most recent target for the last year or so. Why but yeah, the, 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 has he been? Has he said other things about me? Like besides? Well, this? no. Just, yeah, but, just this, okay. <laughs> well, no. There was there was things. No, I'm, I I can't remember specific examples, but I know there were things in the past where it was just you know, if it was something bad, it had to be you. Yeah. You know, Jesus. just like or or you were doing or or something you said had to be about him, and it's like, nah, dude. You know, <laughs> it reminds me world. like back well, in the day, I used to have a job in Second Life, an actual paying job, and I actually made money and a living off doing second life stuff it was basically working for a real estate company um not an actual real life real estate company a real estate company within second life that was selling virtual land and so i was the person there that when you know like anytime someone had a question i'd go and talk to them and be like oh yeah yeah, yeah. this is how much it costs you have to pay this this is how you pay it this is where you pay your you know the, your rent and this is this is what the rules are and if anyone comes here let me know and i'll, I'll ban them or whatever from the estate and that's basically what my job was. And then uh, occasionally building stuff like, you know, building infrastructure like roads and stuff like that. So that when people came there, it's like, oh, you know, not only is this like just like a, a plot of land, but, you know, there's like roads and there's like a thing down the road that I can go on and do like meetings and stuff. And it's kind of all. So it's kind of neat that I that we were doing all that stuff either way. Um, and I ended up getting. I ended up like quitting because I had, I had a spat with, with the guy that did it. And, uh, but there was other people who also had spats with him as well. And, uh, one of them got really upset and like completely catamaraned his entire fucking bill, his whole entire fucking, uh, all of his land, like all the roads were like, you, you ever played the game category, uh, was it Katamari Kamagachi? Is that what it's called? I don't Ka- think Kat- so. Katamari Damanchi. So yeah, it's basically yeah. a game where like you have to like roll around the stuff into a giant ball and everything that you roll over just turns into a giant ball and you have to make it into a giant ball and it's just a and those like there's like cars and like toys and all kinds of just random stuff in a giant ball that's basically what they did is they just took everything and just rotated all of the buildings and and stuff and it was someone that knew me and had my build permissions so they were 
altering stuff that I had built too. Jim did it. <laughs> Jim did it. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. I ended up having to make another account, and I made it a female account so that no one would know that it was me or even have a suspicion that it was me because Jim would never have a female account. But yeah. Then, yeah. But, yeah, that it was kind of like that all over again. It's like everything that's bad. Like, Jim's an industrial terrorist. It's like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Yeah. I just sit here and smoke weed and fucking listen to the residents all day. Like, I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, I, I did smoke weed, but... Yeah. Uh, it was nuts. And, uh, whatever get well soon michael if you're listening get well soon (laughs) like i i I genuinely at the end of the day i I don't care about anything that goes on in michael w dean land like if he wants to you know if he wants to fucking raise money to get cbd that cures cancer like i could care less i no excuse me i could not care less whatever do it do it do what you want I'm leaving you alone i don't talk about you but i felt that i had to at least say something because fucking it was on oh, nationally that's... syndicated talk radio stations across the country about how an evil, terrible person I am for not letting a sick man die because <laughs> he didn't get a CBD. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. You're, you're still a thing, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, I, he, un- unfortunately, I don't think he has many other than his uh, music. <laughs> yeah, the bi- Biptunia thing. And... I, don't, I, don't think he, I don't think he has any more outlets anymore. Because yeah. no, nobody pays attention to them on Facebook, uh, the people who have still stuck around. Yeah, I peeped them on Twitter, and it's like, there's like maybe three or four people that like still talk to him. It's like John Vibes. <clears throat> I know that he ended up taking on some some other co-host, someone in Florida, or not Florida, uh, Hawaii, who was like a... Uh, it was oh, Daryl Becker. Yeah, it was, was it him? Yeah, d- yeah Daryl. Isn't he like an acupuncturist or something like that? Uh, Yeah, and he's... Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he's big on uh, NVC and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I like that. I've hung out with Daryl in person, and I've known Daryl for years. I like, you know, I like. Yeah, Darryl, I, I, I like him. I think really that well. he's completely wrong on all that stuff. But I know. That oh, he... I think he, I, I've yeah, I've argued with him about stuff before yeah. too. But I just, you know, he's, he's he's a cool guy to chill with in person. We had a lot of fun when we met at Pork Fest a couple of years ago. Yeah, but it's like I think he brought him on just because because he knew that I would be, get mad about that, but I wasn't because I knew who Daryl is and I just didn't care. I was just like, oh, that's fine, do whatever you want. It's your show. You can have whatever you want on. You can bring whatever crank you want on. That doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't even know about that. I well, da- Daryl was a legitimate uh, super fan of the show for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And actually, actually, so I, I think, I mean, well, no, it, it I might think, have had something to do with that. Yeah, no, I think. But he I, I know it he also liked Daryl. I think he mentioned it during a show, like, you know, G- you know, oh, Jim Jesus, like, you know, would hate you or something like that. And I was like, why the fuck? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure that came. Uh, out. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree with him vehemently about his occupation, but I don't hate him. Huh? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, moving along. Is there anything else that we need to talk yes. about? Um Lulberts is um, back. We're, we're we're back in full force. Um, um well, I'm sure there's plenty of things we could talk about. It's funny, well I well, the, the, we we could probably go on for even longer if I if I if I bring this up, but only because you only because we were talking about Macy, it's funny. Did, have you heard about the la- latest stuff with her? <laughs> She did a video She's with back Coco. with Adam again. Apparently, oh, shut the yeah, fuck up! Oh my god, I saw. I know they did a video and it was cringy as fuck, but I didn't watch it. I, oh yeah, but ever all the comments were like, "I didn't this watch is the it cringiest either." Cringiest thing I've ever seen. I didn't know they were back together. I, I think oh, from what I've heard, they are. I just I just thought it was like just because she was brought up. I thought it was like oh my because you know I mean I talked about all this stuff when it happened, but you know I've hung out with both of them in, in person, and I, my first impressions of both of them were okay. Macy is a little freaking nutty. And yeah. uh, what you call it, you know, nice. And I, you know, she was pleasant nice, to talk yeah. to. But there was definitely she was de- she was definitely a little nutty. And you know, I, I went from being a fan of Adams to despising him after hanging. Out. Um, and then <laughs> I had the unfortunate the unfortunate experience of hanging out with him a second time, and I actually had to leave the bar that I was at, where there was a whole bunch of people that I actually really wanted to hang out and talk to, and I just I couldn't be around him anymore. <laughs> um, but just when I saw that, I was like, really? Oh, come on! Like, are 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 both of your so-called careers have they hit bottom so much at this point that you you feel you need to do a comeback video or some shit yeah well they're gonna come well i don't know about they but i I know that adam's definitely coming to to vegas this week that's gonna be a thing because he's going where i'm going so Uh, anyways uh, if anyone wants to hang out with me i have free fucking pogs i'll give you some free pogs if you come hang out with (laughs) for free fest you can't miss me uh i'm a big guy for you, I don't. I don't 
I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to make it out there this time around. I, I am going to eventually make it out there. I keep saying I'm going to start driving further west now that I'm living in the car again. Here's the thing. One if of these if, days I'll make it out to Vegas. If you're going to come out to Vegas, just come out for Vegas and have fun. And we'll come and hang out. I'll make pizza and uh, we'll watch the happening and drink some beers. And oh, God. <laughs> so, so I'll show some stuff around town and stuff like that. And we'll have fun. It'll be great. Nice. But for Freedom Fest, nice. yeah. yeah. Well, I, and, unless you it's, have like it's one of those places, I really should be going. I actually know a, I know I know quite a few people out there. I really, including my father. Uh-oh. I probably should go out there yeah. one of these days. <laughs> yeah, my dad probably. lives over in Henderson, you know. So. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, I used uh, to work in Henderson. Buddy, the, <laughs> my my buddy, the the author Rand Eastwood. I don't know if you know Rand. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's 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 uh, he's you know he's out there too. Um. I keep saying one of these days. Yeah, I'm gonna get out there see all you guys. Yeah. But uh, eventually. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, like coming out for for Freedom Fest. Mm. Look, and oh and, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I was just yeah, and like if you're a podcaster, not, not, not high on my list. Yeah, if like if you're a podcaster or an author or some someone in the libertarian circles, and like it's your job professionally or it's something that you volunteer for, like if you work for the LP or some something along those lines, then yeah, you should be at Freedom Fest. If not, don't bother. Like, I, I mean, when I missed last year, I, I I was like, oh, I missed Freedom Fest last year. Oh well. But it didn't really yeah. matter because last year and this year it's going to be kind of like meh years uh, because it's not during a really an election season that really matters to us because libertarians don't really care about the DNC. So we're not going to be too meh. But if it was like a Republican you know, election going on uh, or primary going on, then yeah, it would have been it would have been it would be crazy this year. Um, yeah. Uh, like it was like the year before. That's when Donald Trump showed up. And spoke. Oh, and then the year after that, 2016, that was the presidential election. And that was crazy. Uh, and then the year after that, it was just kind of like, it's kind of small. You know, a few people we knew, kind of we kind of hung out. You know, had some dinner. I had dinner with um, Angela Keaton. Um, fucking what's his name? Uh, Jed Weiss, his girlfriend, Avens O'Brien. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else was there? Oh, fucking name on the tip of my tongue fuck is his name libertarian institute guy jared jared labell jared oh. Bell. i don't was, think he's with the institute anymore didn't he get to wasn't he the guy that people found out he, he was he like falsified a whole bunch of crap about himself and he actually i thought he got bounced out of the community he, i don't know what's going on exactly and and i, I just kind of like i heard well, his I, side I'm, of the story I, i've heard the other side I, of the I'm story i'm almost positive yeah, I'm almost positive. I know he's not part of the Institute anymore because I listen to I'm a huge Scott Horton fan. So mm-hmm. I listen to his show all the time. And whenever he talks about the Institute, he only mentions him, Sheldon Richmond and the late Will Grigg. Now he doesn't, you know, yeah. LaBelle, he used to say LaBelle's name all the time and like he never says it anymore. So I know he's out of there. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I Like I said, I only caught. I have I've paid so little attention over the past. I I catch I catch bits and pieces of these stories. Yeah. That's about all I, I catch up on. Here Here's here's my thoughts on the whole thing. Like. Um, a lot of people thought that that was the reason why I'm not going to get into names here. Um, a lot of the reason, a lot, a lot of people thought that, that was a reason why I, I ended up let, letting go one of the uh, co-hosts. That's not true. That's not why I, I let them go. Um, I'm trying to be very careful not to even allude to who I'm talking about. Uh, but it seems as though like both parties were doing stupid things and they were both not being completely honest about what was going on so i don't know I, I think it was just everybody being stupid that's what i genuinely think maybe some parties were more stupid than others i don't know because everybody kind of tells their own biased side of the story and whatever they're not talking about it anymore and i'm, I'm not talking about it anymore but uh, yeah but uh jared seemed like a pretty cool guy when i hung out with him a couple times you know oh and, all right yeah but i i you know i just, well i put i put more stock i put more stock in that if you know if you've actually had personal interactions with him than yeah than but the other you also gotta heard, remember the like, other stuff i've heard well, I've also had good interactions with Adam Kokesh. So, I mean, it, oh, it doesn't really true. matter. <laughs> like, you know, oh, no. I mean? so, it, well, I, OK, fair enough. But yeah. I, I mean, at least yeah, I mean, I, you're somebody who I, you know, at least for the most part, I trust I trust your uh, character ass- assessments of most people because you seem to actually, you know, pay attention a lot more than other people do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And once I heard the other side of the story, I was just like, oh, this actually just sounds like a giant shit show that I should not be involved with at all. And I just kind of like let it go. I thought I thought I was kind of on you know Jared's side for a while, and then then when I heard the other side, I was just like, "Yeah, that doesn't make sense either." Uh, <laughs> like none of this none of this makes any real sense. Um, slowly back away. Yeah, so I'm, whatever. It's none of my business. And the person I let go that was involved in that, 
I let go for completely different reasons, completely very alien reasons. Um, yeah, just a, just a giant nightmare. Just stay I for, away from I, it. I, I, it, until you said that, I had forgotten that there was that involvement at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, uh, like yeah. I said, I I paid so little attention to the story. I just remember hearing his name and then going. Yeah. And, then, and as soon as you said, it, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, like a week before any of anyway. this happened. Yeah, bef- a week before there's any of this happened, I already made that decision to to let them go. Yeah. I was just like, all right. And then all this stuff happened, and I was like, well, that's just another reason. And then I was like, oh, actually, it's not a reason at all, but whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> moving along. Just sounds like a giant shit show. Any hoodle. I think everybody had some fault in this thing and just, you know, just wanted to make the other side look bad. And it's probably all true. It's probably all of it's true. <laughs> yeah. I bet it's probably like everything that everybody is saying is completely true. And just, you know, just everybody's uh, just omitting the stuff that the other person said. So, yeah, I don't know. It's sure. Just, Sounds like trash, well, but uh, that's, that's, that seems to happen a lot in, the, in, in these communities. I've yeah. noticed. So yeah, why not? We'll, we'll go with that theory. I think yeah. that's. I think that's. It. I think that's safe. Yep. So I, mean, I hope. I hope. So. I hope I didn't allude to anything. <laughs> no. I, I think I was pretty good about watching what I was saying to talk about who, because yeah, because here's here's the thing. Like, um, going back into Michael for a second, like you have a you have a podcast you can do whatever you want you can have on whoever you want and you can have whatever co-host you have on you can let them go for whatever reason you want that's fine but i think there there's there's a there's an issue with like having a podcast where people listen to it and people do listen to the show and if i were to go on here and you know start bad mouthing some co-host that used to be on here you know where they don't really have maybe maybe they do have a platform to to respond, but they don't have a re, you know a platform to respond to the same people that I'm talking to. Then all you're doing is just basically causing like giant divisions, and it doesn't fucking matter. Like, and at the end of the day, anything that I'm going to fire people over over this show, it's not going to be something that's like, oh, they're a terrible, awful person. Like, for instance, if I found out tomorrow that you were like scamming people, <laughs> like Kokesh, <laughs> doing something like Kokesh, oh, I'd call you out. But none of these yeah. people have been doing stuff like that. It's just stuff that I think um, uh, better not. <laughs> it's just stuff that, you know, it's, it's going to be harmless for people who consume it, generally speaking. Uh, or, you yeah. know, then I'm just going to be like, that's just that's not the direction for the show for me. I will say but there is one person that I did let go from the show, and he's fine with me talking about it because we're still friends. And that's Baron. And it's because Baron's not a libertarian anymore. Mm, and he's fine with that <laughs> but uh we actually plan on doing something else uh, a non-political oh, yeah. little political project but he's just finding time finding time around our schedules to do stuff is kind of hard but uh we have like over a year worth of amazon stuff that we haven't gone through at all and we've already been at this for an hour and a half and i, I doubt you want to go through a year and a half worth of amazon purchases. <laughs> So what yeah, Baron and I are going to do, we're just going to do a whole episode. It's going to be on the Lulbert's feed where we're just going to talk about all the Lulbert's <laughs> stuff. Nice. Because it's the only way I can get him on the show because he's not really a libertarian. Um, is, so that, is he still doing the monarchist thing? Uh, no, I think he's I think he's a skeptical absolutist now. Um, <laughs> I think that, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, I think he, he was an absolutist and he's kind of been interested in that whole idea, but I think he's starting to have like questions <laughs> questions about the whole thing but he gotcha. still he still likes libertarians generally speaking like he likes hanging out with libertarians he has a problem with a lot of libertarians like i do too as well but um he's gonna oh, actually gonna uh-oh. be hanging out with me at liberty fest i'm like why are you coming you're not a libertarian he's like i still like libertarians it's like all right <laughs> <laughs> that's good <cool>. I've, <laughs> okay. I've, right. always, I've always found i've always found byron to be a very interesting character yeah he's a very interesting person <laughs> to say the so, least so uh to say the least, I'm, I'm glad to hear he's still around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't, you know, he doesn't do, you know, he, he left the show and then I don't, you know, I don't, is he even on social media anymore? I don't see him anymore. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's not on Facebook anymore. He, I ended uh, up deleting uh, yeah. my Facebook account like last week, and what happened was some bullshit happened with Instagram, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I, <laughs> I was like, all right, fuck this. I don't, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm deleting, um, I'm, I'm deleting it or whatever. And then something happened that made me log into Instagram again because it was connected to my Facebook account. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, I'll just solve this problem too. Delete Facebook. And it's like, are you sure you're going to unlist your Jim Jesus page and your Libertarians Against Humanity page and all this other? And I was like, yeah. Just <laughs> it. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple times where I had to. Uh, so it's a quote unquote temporarily disabled, which there's no real way to just go delete my account. Um, you just temporarily dis- disable it. And I think after a while, they just completely delete it. But I've had to log oh. into it again and reactivate it because, like, 
UPS was tied to my Facebook account because it was like years and years and years ago that I created that account. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. Uh, reinstitute it and then fucking delete it again. But they, I said, like, <laughs> they asked, like, why are you getting rid of Facebook? And I said, privacy concerns. They're like, would you like to explain? And I was like, no, fuck you. That's what I typed in there. <laughs> I was like, disable account. Felt so good to get rid of Facebook. But, hey, we should talk about social media yeah. addiction. We should talk about that. We should talk about that since uh, Trump wants to legislate uh, social media and make it so conservatives can jump in. Here's an idea. Just don't use it. Just stop. (laughs) That's probably the best advice. Yeah. Uh, I I mean, I personally, I've gotten much better, uh, especially over like the last six months or so. I don't know if I'll ever get to a point of deleting my stuff from anywhere only because i still do put out content you know like i, I mean I, i've still been keeping up with my well not as much as i had been but i still do my vlogs and stuff like that like i said i started doing podcasting again with, with the liberty forge guys so i like to have some outlets to put that out in but i've definitely got like i'm not on my phone constantly and it's funny i actually i was actually able to finally really break the habit by first getting super addicted to a stupid uh, by a stupid uh, phone uh, ga- a game on my phone, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I was playing the WWE Champions, oh. which was a, which was essentially like uh, one of those gem break games with an overlay of wrestling on top of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I got ridiculously addicted to that for two months until the ga- until they updated the game and I couldn't play it anymore because I use a very old. Uh, Samsung, <laughs> yeah. and then I got mad. But then once I stopped doing that, I realized, oh, I don't have to go back to checking Facebook like five million times a day just because I can't help myself. So I've at least, you know, like I said, I'm still there, but I only go on like you know a couple times a day. Occasionally I'll post stuff. I don't pay attention to hardly anything. I almost never scroll my feed. Uh, so I feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah, like even Facebook. The only time I ever go on there was I just go on there because I had been largely inactive on that thing, and occasionally I would just post something about like delete Facebook or just spam my news feed with nothing but trout mask replica to the point where like Facebook's even like, hey, is your account hacked? Um, enter your password again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just keep someone keeps posting like trout mask replica songs on here. Like, what the fuck is going on? So, um. I, I was doing that for a while and just like, or like if I did post something, I'd be like, oh, yeah, by the way, delete Facebook. And I would look at like the first like three or four things on my news feed because usually like if someone dies or something like that, that's where it's going to be. Um, yeah. So I just want to make sure that everyone's still alive. I'm like, all right. Okay. <laughs> um, log off. And after I deleted my account there, there's been times where I would just type F in my search bar and hit enter because, you know, if I hit F and enter, it would just take me to Facebook. Sure. Now I type F and enter. I'm paying respects. <laughs> just doesn't, just doesn't like. It'll just be like, oh, you're, you're not logged in. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I deleted my account. And so yeah, nice. there's, uh, it's it, that's gone now. Like I, I'm not doing it anymore. But for a good like few days, I was doing that just out of habit. Sure. That's how, that's how dangerous addiction is. Like when I quit smoking cigarettes, uh, I like snooze now. I just enjoy snooze. Like I'm addicted to it. I'm sure, but I just enjoy fucking nicotine, and it's the safest way to get it in me. Um. I still haven't made the switch yet. I, I do enjoy snooze. I actually still have some with me, mm. but I haven't, like... It's funny, I actually just got, uh, uh, you know, speaking of former fiends and Lulberts, uh Lisa, the last show, p- put out a smoking cessation program mm-hmm. that I've been waiting for for months on end because she was talking about it at the end of last year, and she kept saying, I'm going to have it soon, and whoever wants to be a beta tester will get it for free, and I just happened to be one of the people that said, all right, I'll give it a shot early on, and she finally just... I think last week she just sent out the email saying that it's finally completed and, uh, you know, gave us all of us beta testers the, you know, the password to get in. So we wouldn't have to pay for it. Um, I haven't tried it out yet, but yeah, I've been bad. But I do like snooze, though. Th- thanks to you. I do actually enjoy doing it. I just wish I could switch to it all the time because I-, I, too, like my nicotine. And that's why I think I'm going to have a problem giving up everything altogether. Yeah. Uh, well, what is it? Uh, I th- did we talk about Zen last time? No, but I do okay. keep seeing this in the stores now. It's 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 here more and more. Like it's it's hard for me to well not hard, but it's a little more difficult for me to find snooze here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you might well try to but see. the well the general the general snooze at least the stuff that you turned yeah. me on to. But but the Zin is popping up in all the Seven Elevens. Yeah. So Zin is made by the same people that make General. It's Swedish. Oh, match. is it? Yeah. I didn't fact, realize that Swedish Match makes most of the the snooze stuff that you find, and they also make a um, a dip. That's actually not dip. It's actually just snooze, but it's in a giant fucking pouch. And you're supposed to put it on your bottom lip and spit. But it's still made the same way as snooze. So you could put it in your 
that giant hunk of thing in your top lip if you really want to. And there's a guy who does like snooze reviews and he, he reviews those and he's like, yeah, fucking, it just tastes like a, a different flavor of snooze. Like a different way of making snooze, yeah. Uh, it just doesn't have like the, um, you know, it doesn't have the mint flavors or, well, unless they're mint flavored. Um, you know, it doesn't have any of that uh, and it doesn't have the, um, the citrus in there. The uh, uh, Earl, Bergamot, or, or, what the fuck is it called? Oh yeah, Bergamot. that stuff that yeah. I yeah that's Earl that stuff Ritchie. that I wasn't a big fan of. <laughs> I, oh, I love it. You should you should try the black and gold one. You should try the black and gold one because it's it's there. I have very mild. I so, have not come across that one yet. Yeah, the last tricky. time I, I was actually very disappointed because I picked them up when I was in Florida, and cigarettes are cheaper than they are in New York. So I figured it you know it would follow through with the snooze. No, I had to pay like eight bucks a can down there. Jeez, uh, for the snooze. But I got it. But I but the only ones they had were the white, the blue, the green and one other one i don't remember probably a about, small it wasn't blue. the black and gold it's probably a small um, i do i do like the green one though i keep getting that one i like the, the green one green? yeah the winter green's good yeah yeah i like the original that's what i usually get but every once in a while i'll change it up and be like ah let's get let's get the winter green oh, let's get the peppermint <laughs> let's get the let's get the white uh, but every once in a while like if i go to work like if i'm if i'm going to work i'll get the zins because the the zins they look like um yeah, the the packets the packets are pure white. You know, they're not like in a white case. They're just white. Um, okay. So there's, people won't look at that and go, "Oh, that's nicotine or whatever." They'll just think like, "Oh, is that gum or is that a mint or something?" And it's like, yeah, whatever. So it's it's kind of really, uh, what's the term? Concealable. No, well, discreet. There we go. It's really discreet. Discreet. There you yeah. go. That's good. And they come. Oh, in, see, that, that's funny. They come I, in flavors. The only like, people. Hmm? Sorry. Go oh ahead. no. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say. Well, I was just going to say. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, I was just going to say. It's, hold on. It's, it's just funny that you said that because nobody has ever said it. The only people who have ever seemed to notice that I have it in at all, even with the regular snooze, is my kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nobody else has ever seemed to know, but I, I like that idea. Maybe I'll have to give those ones a try. Anyway, you're saying flavors. Yeah. Like when I go to when I go to work, like I, like I've been at work like many times and talked to people and whatever, and then like like a week or two down the line of seeing me all the time. Then they're like, like, wait, wait, what is that? What were you put? Have you been doing that the whole time? Like, yeah. Oh, like, what is that? And then I'll tell them what it is. And they're like, Oh, that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, like they don't even know, like I'm doing it right now and it's fine. And it's great because it's also, it's also great for radio because I don't have to like, you know, my fucking vape anymore. That was getting annoying for a lot of people, <laughs> which I'm sure a lot of people are glad about, but either way, um, but, yeah, I do. I actually, I, I, I do it too when I podcast indoors. Uh, I've, I've, you, I, that's what, I, that's one of the things I definitely throw some snooze in. <laughs> yeah, but um, right, but the the zins, they're just like all the stuff in it besides the nicotine salts are just like stuff that you would find in like gum. So like, you know, sugar free gum sweetener. Um, you know, some 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 gum, you know, chewing gum stuff in there. And you just put it in your top lip, and they have different flavors. The coffee one is really good. It tastes like, I don't know, some bullshit, some sweet bullshit that you would get at Starbucks or whatever. Mm. Um, then they have. I'm like, gonna have to go. Those, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to give these a try. Since like, like I said, I, I they're definitely more prevalent around here than the general snooze is. So yeah, then they have like you know all the different types of mint, cool mint, peppermint, spearmint, wintergreen, and then they also have cinnamon too. Which I'm not. I don't know if I would want cinnamon in my in my lip, but whatever. Um. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it would burn. That seems like it would burn a- after a while. And I already have an issue where, especially like, and I I'm, I'm saying this as I just pop one in my mouth now because I realized as we were talking and I've been smoking cigarettes this whole time because I'm sitting in my car. I'm like, oh wait a minute, I have snooze in my fridge behind me, <laughs> uh, and I just popped one in. And this is the problem I have every once in a while. And it seems to happen. Well, actually. It's, Actually, it happens even more with the wintergreen, but it definitely happens with the white one, which I still have some of. I'm still still not a fan of these, but I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, is it actually burns my lip if I haven't used it for a while? Like not a lot, but there's mm-hmm. definitely a more than a tingly sensation the the first time I pop one in after not using it for like a week or so. I don't know if you've ever experienced yeah. that. Uh, I definitely don't think I'd want to do the cinnamon because that just means it seems to me yeah, like it would exactly exacerbate burn. the problem. <laughs> I thought peppermint would burn me too, but the peppermint's fine. Uh, but they also come in like two different like um, doses. Like the they have like the three milligram and the six milligram. Oh, so the oh, because the general only comes in one strength, right? Yeah, yeah. Far, well, at least that I see. Yeah, at least that I've come across. Yeah, I think they're all like eight milligrams, and I think they count it by free nicotine. So they're not. It's not all the nicotine that's in there. There's more nicotine in there, but your body can't absorb it, so they just don't count it. Um, oh okay 
Yeah, because there's like two different there's two different types of nicotine. There's like there's like nicotine, and then there's like free nicotine. And free nicotine is the type of nicotine that your body can absorb and use. Everything else just gets thrown away. Um, so like dip will have like thirty three milligrams of of nicotine, but the the free nicotine is only like six. Oh, okay. So that's why snooze. A lot of people like snooze more because it has more free nicotine in it. And it's more concentrated in a smaller dose. You're not having to put a giant lip of shit. And then not only that, you're not spitting. It's gross. <laughs> well, that, that, is, that, that, that is the main reason that I was that I actually like this. Because I never, I think I tried dip once or twice. And the first time, I definitely got myself sick. And the second time, I, I realized very quickly, this is just not for me. Yeah. Uh, in I like the flavor. I like the flavor of, uh, of like Copenhagen. But it's so gross. It's like spitting it out and looking well, yeah. at it. Like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> Like what am I doing? This is gross, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely not a fan. Yeah, but I was trying to, I, before I could get my hands on snooze, or before I knew about where I could get my hands on snooze, I tried dipping to get to make sure that I couldn't make a lot of noise when I uh, when I was doing podcasting, and I was just like, this is fucking gross. This is not even worth it. I'd just rather just make my make my audience suffer through my vape hits <laughs> to deal with this. And then snooze happened. Yeah, and that I was seems like, like oh, a I'm in love. Dipping seems like it'd be even more work than trying to smoke or vape or whatever. Yeah, on well, a show. you can you can like spit into a jug <laughs> or something, you know, when no one's looking. As long as you're not like, poof, poof, you're just like, mm, there you go. Yeah, but yeah, it's gross. D- don't don't dip. Do snooze. It's great. Um, where's I going with that? I don't know. I forgot where I was going with that. We were, we were talking about addiction, and then we slipped oh, yeah, over yeah, yeah. to this. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So I, I had to uh, I had to uh, enter an addiction clinic and uh, d- come to the terms of the fact that I'm an addict. And uh, so yeah, and I might as well just say it here that hi, I'm Jim, and uh, I'm a Mario Maker addict. <laughs> 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 and I've been sober for. Uh, how long have you been, how, how long have been recording? <laughs> Fifty four seconds. <laughs> no, dude, I love that game. I can't, I can't, I can't evangelize about it enough. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Mario Maker is so great. <laughs> you should buy a Switch just for Mario Maker. It's it's legitimately that great. Did Did you ever play Mario? Were you more of a Mario or a Zelda person? Because uh, Zelda and Mario probably is Mar- of, Zelda and Mario is well, kind of probably like the Mario. Beatles and Elvis. Like you have to like one more than the other. More Mario. Well, I I mean I love the I love the first Zelda, but I never played the other ones until the other systems started coming out. So I never played. Uh, I never. I don't think I ever played more than the first couple levels. Well, Link to the Past was the second one, right? So yeah, probably Mario because I definitely played all of those up until at least oh. four. I think was I think Link to the I Past st- was on the Super Nintendo, right? Probably. I never got into it, so like that was, you know, I I think I played a couple of levels and then, but Mario I played all the way up until four, and then I switched to PlayStation, and I never really went back, except for my brief phase when I bought the GameCube, because well, why did I buy the? Oh, because I bought the, the GameCube Cube. because at the time, well, no, at the time they said they were only going to put Resident Evil. I think it might have been five, or I don't remember which one it was. Whatever Resident Evil they were up to at that point, they were claiming they were only going to put on the GameCube. So I went out and bought one, and it was insane. And then, of course, like less than a year later, PlayStation put it out anyway. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, I, I was kind of done with my, my Nintendo phase after I got my first PlayStation because I kind of never looked back. Yeah, but Mario, those 2D Mario games are great. No, but there was um, there was two uh, Zelda games for the NES. One is kind of, like the second one was polarizing because it was like, it was more of a platformer. It kind of looked more like a platformer. Like, because you'd look, you know, the side, you'd look at the side of, of Zelda, or excuse me, Link, and he would jump around on things and kind of like, you yeah, know, which one was that? That's the one I was thinking of, I think, but I, it wasn't Link. What was that one called? I don't uh, even remember. Link's Adventure, when I, I said, think. I, when I, I said remember. Link to the Past, I thought that's the one I was talking about. But. Yeah, Link, Link's, Link to the Past was Super Nintendo. Yeah, I didn't play that one either. I, di- I didn't play him again until what was, was it Ocarina of Time maybe I played? Um, no, it was Ocar- uh, Ocarina was great, yeah, and and I'm never I've never been a real big Zelda fan at all. Mm. Uh, let's see, do but uh, when Breath of the Wild came out, and I was looking at all the gameplay stuff for that, and I was like, oh, I need this. This looks like everything I liked about Ocarina of Time on steroids. 
and it was it was fucking beautiful. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Is there games? Do you have a list of games? Oh yeah, it was the Adventures of Link. So there's Legend of Zelda Adventures. Oh of okay, Link. yeah. A Link to the Past was for the Super Nintendo. Link's Awakening was for the Game Boy, and they're re-releasing that. They're re-releasing that game, and they're remastering it, and it looks looks kind of cool. But I don't know. I'm not a big fan of those kinds of Zelda games. I just yeah, like I never. I was. The, I had. I, I had a game by a Game Boy, but I was never really big into it. Like I played it for like some of the simple games, but never really. Yeah, Mario. Was it Mario? Is it was it fucking Mario Adventure? The fuck, whatever, whatever Mario game was on that one, that was pretty good. Yeah, I, I never played any of those. I was, like, straight up like a Tetris, and there might have been one Tetris football game at one point. I think <laughs> foosball. Yeah, yeah. but Nite- Nintendo's been doing pretty well with the Switch. They're they're knocking it out of the park right now. From what I've heard, and I mean I've. My my buddy that I was staying with uh, over the winter, his he has a Switch for his kids. So I've played it a couple of times, whatever games they have. Um, and I, I mean, I like it. I just it's 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 been hard for me, you know, considering yeah, yeah. I'm out on the road most of the time. So uh, please I mean, donate to Jeremy. To so please donate to Jeremy so yes. he can buy a Switch and so he can play my Mario Maker levels. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, please, hashtag, hashtag please donate. I'm one of the few people who hasn't given up on Patreon yet just because I haven't felt like switching anything over. And people, people still, I still have, I still get a, a monthly, uh, a monthly thing from Patreon. Yes, yeah, so um, I still do too. Even though people, I have, people still donate to me. Like, if, hey, if you. I'm not on there. I'm not posting content on there. But if you want to donate to this and encourage me to, oh yeah, exactly. Money, I was just gonna say, like, that's fine. Thank, but, th- um, th- thank you all of you that still do that. I still get a decent amount of money every month. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't put out any Patreon content in a year and a half. Yeah, it's like um, sixteen bucks only- or something after all the Patreon tax. But whatever. yeah. No. I get like 30 bucks or something. It's nice. You know? It was because you weren't going on there saying, "Hey, everyone, I'm leaving." I'm going to Subscribestar, and then Subscribestar, I ended up leaving, which is a fine platform. It's just. It's just that like a lot of my audience were like is like skeptical of it and they don't want to give their money up, and the people that do, I yeah. I, I would, could never get the money and I couldn't close my account and that's where I was just like okay I can't I can't do this anymore if I can't close my account, I'm done, so I ended up contacting yeah. them and saying like just delete my account and they were like okay sorry you're having this problem, and that was it I yeah. never had any issues with them again, but yeah they wouldn't uh, the only way you can delete your account is if there's no one that gives you uh, money. People oh. still give you money. You can't close your account. And I kept telling them, like, just can you stop giving me money on this thing? Because I'm never going to get it. And they wouldn't do it. So I was like, fine, I'll just contact subscribers to and see what I could do. And I was just and I was kind of curt with them just because I wanted like I just wanted to convey urgency. They're not a bad platform. It's just it's just not not for me and not for my audience. And they don't do what I need them to do. So best of luck to them. But uh, Podbean does. <laughs> but do you, many, do you have any people I have on Podbean right now? Um, let me check and make sure they have my numbers right. Uh, yeah, zero. <laughs> so I have no reason to like upgrade or anything like that and post more stuff on there. I don't know. I wish there was just some. I wish there was just Patreon, but you know, that worked like Patreon that you know doesn't have all the baggage. It just says like, hey, if you want, yeah. if you want to post garbage, go ahead. I don't care what you post. Go ahead and post your garbage. You want to post nudes? Go ahead and post nudes. But because they want to ban, our, uh, you know, like even even if they're alt right, I don't care. Even if they want to ban them, if they want to ban uh, fucking, um, uh, you know, thoughts, that's what I'm like. All right, I I can't because they're eventually going to come for me. They're eventually going to come for the libertarians once they see them as a threat. And yep. we're we're next in the chopping block. And then after that, they're probably going to go out the Marxists. Because Marxists were going to be like, oh, yeah, now we can do whatever we want. Let's start overthrowing all these companies. They're going to be like, uh, 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 mm-mm. <laughs> gone. So they're going to they're just going to start going after everybody soon. So I'm over it. Over <laughs> it. But hey, if you if you want to give me money and that's the way you want to give it to me, that's fine. Or just do PayPal or whatever. Honestly, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this for fun. I enjoy doing the Lulverts, even though I haven't done it for a while. So uh, when Nintendo stops giving me fun things to do, uh, I'll come here and do this. <laughs> but, or I'll force myself to do it to make you guys happy. <laughs> but as soon as I'm done, I'm going to go play Mario Maker. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, happy Prime Day. <laughs> it's Amazon Prime Day. Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's right. Yeah, which, uh... which means that Baron is uh, not going to be my friend for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be we're doing overtime. 
<laughs> oh, that's right. He's still in Amazon World. Yep. <sighs> All right. So you want to plug anything uh, before we wrap up or anything else you want to bring uh, up? Uh, I mean, like I said, if, if if you want to hear more of me, you can always go to libertyforge.com because that's where I've been doing. Nice. Like, you know, I, I, I still put out my my vlogs. I, I still, you know, like I said, I haven't bothered to get off Patreon and I still I'm still putting my stuff, my most of my content, my personal stuff on Steam it just because I'm too lazy to switch to anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, yeah, the Liberty Forge, uh, we've been. We've had a bunch of episodes come out, and then uh, the main guy, Kyle, he just had his third kid, so he's going to be out of commission for a while, which means we may not have any episodes because Merrick and I are just too lazy to actually do the work anymore. Uh, we kind of joined him on the Liberty Forge because he was willing to do all the editing and all that stuff, and we were kind of like, hey, we just have to show up and talk. Excellent. We'll be there. <laughs> kind of like why I, why I always say yes to you when you call me because I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't have to do anything but show up and talk. Let's do it, man. <laughs> and Dave's not here? Cool. <laughs> Dave is definitely not fucking here and it makes me Dave's so happy not here. oh dude sto sto well I, we go on forever a story i could tell about him oh, please, oh my god let's man. wrap it up with that <laughs> okay all right i i actually on my way down to florida i i've never been on to the west side of florida over the pensacola and the panhandle area never been there in my life been to florida plenty of times so this is my first time going that way so i actually had to drive through tennessee and alabama for the first time in my life so as i'm driving down i'm like I'm going through Alabama. Oh, I might as well oh. call the guy and see what he's up to, you know, and be like, hey, man, I'm passing through. Maybe, you know, after all these years, we could finally meet up because I've still never met Dave. Um, and he kind of like hems and haws or whatever. And I tell him I'm going to see Merrick, who, you know, he was friends with at one point, too. So I'm just like, you know, you know, whatever. Maybe if you can come down that way. Well, I get down there. And while I'm down there, another one of Merrick's friends who he used to do a show with his, 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 when he was doing the Radical Logic podcast, his buddy Jonathan, also happens to show up, which was really cool for me because I've known him for years, too. First time I get to meet him. Well, Dave ends up coming up with the conversation and they proceeded to tell me the story of what happened when Dave went down to visit Merrick. And when I figured out the timelines and stuff, this was kind of around the time that Dave started drifting away from social media and everything. It kind of like disappeared. And now everything makes sense to me <laughs> mm. because I had heard that he went down there and he told us, you know, he came back to the show and told us he had a great time, whatever. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, apparently Dave showed up, uh, was pretty much high the entire time he was there. And not, you know, I'm usually high when I'm hanging out with people, but like to the point where he couldn't even form sentences. <laughs> and he was just the most obnoxious house guest that Merrick, who is, you know, kind of a hothead at times but is usually a very generous and um forgiving individual and it really takes him a lot to be like you know you can't come back here anymore and his wife is a really awesome woman and she's kind of the same way like she's you know willing to cook for people and like she like she's a uh, malaysian and she knows how to make food for like all over the world and she nails like every dish i had from her was spectacular and she she likes to cook so you know <clears throat> she doesn't mind having guests and stuff like that but yeah, apparently Dave was so obnoxious that he wore out his welcome before the end of the first day, but he stuck around. And the next morning, Jonathan told me the story that he woke up and heard gunfire when he woke up because they're down in South, you know, in Florida and the panhandle and stuff on, you know, on a private road way back in the woods where they have a gun range on their property. So Jonathan's just like, oh, you know, somebody must be up already out there shooting. So he throws on his clothes and walks out there to go join him. And there he finds Dave, who already at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning is already high as a kite, just firing wildly on the range to the point where Jonathan's like, dude, you're shooting over the berm. Like, you're shooting into Merrick's neighbor's property. They have kids and stuff, dude. You can't be doing that. <laughs> and Dave continues to be really cocky and is like, I could walk back even further, you know, all the way over there and nail that target. And he tries to do it, and he shoots one more time, completely missing the berm. Jonathan actually had to take – it was Dave's gun. Jonathan actually had to take the gun out of Dave's hand <laughs> and was like, you are, you're not allowed to play with this anymore. <laughs> I just walked away from him with his gun. And then the next morning they woke up and David cleared out in the middle of the night without saying anything to anybody and hopped in his car and left. This and that was kind of the last way. time Merrick or Jonathan heard from Dave. And it was around that time that Dave started disappearing from everybody. Oh, no. So, yeah, I am very glad that Dave, Dave Hemden Hall didn't want to actually meet after I heard this story. I'm like, oh, my God, man, like. 
him and I had our issues over the years, and obviously, a lot of our our fans love the fact that I I would go at him <laughs> yeah, on the that, show and stuff like that, and call him on his bullshit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I just kind of always thought he was an idiot, and not like this, not a complete asshole, but apparently, he really is a complete douchebag. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, because it like it just totally made sense. Like everything started falling into place after I heard this story. <laughs> All right. I guess I guess after I upload this, uh, I'll wait a couple of days and then I'll upload the uh, Seeds of Liberty when I went on there because <laughs> that was. Great. <laughs> that was uh, great. I was listening to it like a few weeks ago. I was like, I should upload this to my channel. <sighs> it might confuse people because it's old. <sighs> we should do it anyway. <sighs> I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, I just should, but just on the Lulbert's channel. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, that's Dave apparently, and it makes me even happier that Dave is not here or anywhere else I go. <laughs> uh, <sighs> ripping pepperoni, so, yeah. Dave. Ripping pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you want to plug your stuff? <laughs> oh yeah, like I said, I think we did that. Yeah, yeah Liberty. Yeah. Like I said, LibertyForge.com is where you can find me podcasting these days. I'm sure we'll have another episode out soon. I dropped the ball. When I went to the fe- the Midwest Peace Celebrity Fest, I had promised the guys because Kyle knew his baby was going to be due in, you know, in a couple in a month or so. And I was like, oh, don't worry. I'm going to go to the fest. I'm going to be hanging out with Prof CJ and Brett Vanat and stuff like that and a whole bunch of people. I'll get us a whole bunch of interviews. I, I had my equipment in the car. It didn't make it out of the car the entire time. I did lots of psychedelics, had lots of fun, <laughs> ate lots of food. <laughs> Never recorded a damn thing. So, um, yeah, we'll have some new episodes soon, I'm sure, though. Yeah, sounds good. And uh, I'll post my Mario Maker uh, con- uh, ID on there so you can follow me and play my levels because I've been making puzzle levels and they're pretty good. At least I think they're go. good. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think they're good. The other people think they're good, so I guess they're good. Well, you know. Question mark, you can hey. me. Hashtag please donate. If enough people donate to me, I'll, go, I'll finally get my Switch and then I'll go test out your levels. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a Switch, so I'm good. <laughs> and I don't need to be to buy me games because I have Mario Maker. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, should we say worms? Yeah, fuck it. Worms. I'm still I'm taking it back. <laughs> worms. Worms.